In one beautiful place among the green beauties stood the mansion of Duke Regas. Right now, inside this mansion, in the Duke's own office, a man with slicked back black hair was looking out the window at the street. Looking there, he called his son Thor Regas. Then the man said that it was decided that the great empire of Dulgaria would send him to another country as a hostage. Thor Regas, who was a young man with brown hair, surprised by this decision, remained in a stupor and asked what his father meant. There are three men, a butler, and two soldiers standing behind Thor. Without looking his son in the face, the duke looked at the cart that had just arrived and informed his son about it, saying that he believes that this is an insignificant sacrifice. At that moment, the man turned around and said that it was for the glory of the Regas family. When the man turned around, the son saw his father's old face, which did not express any feelings. These words were the first words he had heard from his father in the last three years. Thor, coming to himself with a slight worry and cold sweat running down his face, told his father that he did not understand why he had to go to another country. The man, whose eyes were as black as pitch, looked at him with a homeless look and with a gloomy face, said that it would be better if Thor was dead. These words made the guy's brain freeze and he asked what his father meant. But someone behind him let out a chuckle. Standing surrounded by such looks and chuckles, the guy wondered why, after all, he broke off relations with the Duke's family. At the age of 13, he found a job and left home. He lived like a commoner and had no intention of returning to the Duke's house. Three years have passed since that moment. And right while working, the duke's soldiers broke into his house and dragged him home without any explanation. While the guy was floating in the current of memories, his father's sharp cry brought him out of them. The duke shouted that he had said that, in their family, those who do not have combat skills are not needed. After his words, the man turned to the butler, an old man with binoculars and gray hair, and the captain of the knights, a middle-aged man with blonde hair, and told them to tell about the guy's act. The night captain punched his heart, opened his eyes, and obeyed, and then smiled maliciously and said that when Tor Regas was ten years old, he passed a skill test in the temple, and no combat skill was revealed. This is unacceptable for the eldest son of the duke's family. After these words, the guy clenched his fist, but the butler with a gloomy face continued after the night. He said that at the age of twelve, a second skill test was conducted and a magic skill was revealed, but it had nothing to do with attacking skills. This was unacceptable for an aristocrat. At this time, the other servants and knights of the house also began to condemn the guy. Someone said that it was a shame for the nobles, and someone said that it was necessary to remove the guy from the country as soon as possible, because this is inexcusable. He definitely can't stay here. Hearing all this, the duke sighed and then with a gloomy face told his son that they had high hopes for him when he was born. Their family had possessed powerful fighting skills since ancient times, and his son was to lead this empire one day. Despite this, his son was worthless. All this made the man furious and turning around. He shouted with an angry face that the guy did not have a single combat skill. He can't use attacking magic either. The duke's eldest son, whose grandfather was a holy sword, turned into this. Does Thor understand what it's like for the parents of such a child? Listening to this, the guy couldn't say anything. Bowing his head, he was only covered in cold sweat running down his body. It was the fate of something that doesn't have combat skills, due to its military might. The Daguerre Empire was able to significantly expand its territories. His Highness, the First Emperor, was also at first an ordinary brave warrior who fought for this empire. Therefore, everyone appreciates combat skills very much, regardless of the conditions. In particular, the aristocrats had more powerful skills, so nobles without combat skills were looked down upon. The gloomy guy clenched his fist and said that he really did not have combat skills, but he did have the skill of alchemy. Hearing this, the duke clenched his teeth, but the guy with cold sweat running down his face continued saying that his alchemical skill allows you to repair and restore items. At the moment, he is in charge of subjects at a government institution. In the future, he will be able to create items himself if he hones the skill. Right now, Thor was saving up money to open a workshop, but the duke was furious at the verbalization and excuses of his son, and therefore he hit the table with his fist, which caused the table to break, shouted that Thor Regas be silent. Seeing this, the guy stopped abruptly, not understanding the duke's rage. The guy asked what the duke meant and he said that the empire has a holy sword and a holy shield created by heroes. When there are two strongest items, is the guy going to create a new one? It's just stupid. At with a broken table in front of him, the duke with a pitch black face said that the guy would be sent as a hostage and it was not discussed. Realizing that these people were not going to listen to him, the guy decided to at least gather information. Then Thor said that he understood that the decision was final, but what the duke meant when he said that it was a minor sacrifice. Calming himself down, the man chuckled and turned around and said that the guy was going to a rather dangerous land that's what. The empire has sent hostages many times, but they are all missing. None of them returned. From the father described, 
The guy realized something and became covered in cold sweat, which began to flow down his face. With a tremor in his eyes, Thor asked if his father really meant the land of the Demon King. Grinning, the duke said that discernment was his son's only virtue. But then, making a blank look, the man said that if the guy really was perceptive, then he should have committed suicide long ago. Grinning to himself, the guy thought that he didn't care how people thought of him, but did this guy really decide to send him to the demons? The guy said he didn't know that the Empire was doing cultural exchange with demons. Upon hearing this, the duke froze, and the guy continued, saying that he had heard that demons are very bloodthirsty and they must somehow coexist with them. The man nodded and said that's why every few years they appease them. Grinning, the captain of the knights added that demons are like animals. They are satisfied that they can kill people, thereby proving their superiority. Now I understand why his words do not reach these people. They really want him dead. After that, the duke said that the conversation was over, so the guy should disappear. With these words, the man quickly appeared next to his son and hit him in the stomach, knocking the spirit out of him. The guy's eyes trembled from the pain, and the duke turned around and told them to take him out. Looking directly at his father, the guy grinned broadly and said that he hated this Duke Barker Regas. Looking at him with empty bottomless eyes, the Duke said that he was already a dead man and the dead do not talk. That's how the guy was expelled from his native country. The carriage drove inexorably slowly but surely. He was accompanied by a number of warriors and inside the carriage, of course, was Tor Regas. A light ray of light entered the dark room of the carriage and the guy raised his head and looked at the forest that surrounded this road. Once upon a time, the demon kingdom was at war with humanity. A few hundred years ago, a war broke out between demons and humans over territories. The powerful army of the Demon King has invaded the southern domain. At that time, people summoned a hero from another world. The Demon King and his army were strong, but the hero was not inferior to them. It was a fierce battle, but the humans managed to gain the upper hand and exorcise the Demon King. After that, a strict boundary was drawn between the demons and the human world. The lands in the south became known as the human world, and those that stretched beyond the forest in the north, the kingdom of demons. After the appearance of the border, there were no Saris conflicts, but it was said that demons hated people because of their exile to the north. Almost nothing is known about the demon kingdom until now. Looking at the window, which was nailed with boards, the guy sighed, saying that because of this he could not see anything at all. Leaning on his arm, the guy closed his eyes to the steady clatter of the wheels, thinking about those around him. The guards outside were about 20 guards. Besides them there are several cavalrymen. Even if Thor Regas tries to escape, he will be caught immediately. That was also why he didn't want to get involved with the Duke's family. The guy almost managed to break the connection with them. Thor passed the state exams by signing his mother's last name. He was hired, where he was responsible for paperwork and maintenance of some artifacts. In the Empire, a civil servant is someone who couldn't even become an adventurer. He had no choice and also had a low salary. Employees of other departments mocked him. And yet, despite all this, he was pleased. After all, he was doing his favorite job and could create swords using alchemy. Thinking about the swords, the maintenance of that magic sword was not finished yet. If only he could get it back to perfect condition. But that's not going to happen now. Clenching his clasped fingers, he thought that he was a dead man. Taking out three spoons, the guy waved them several times and thought that these were spoons that he had stolen. Taking advantage of the inattention of the soldiers, concentrating on them, the guy activated his skill. Energy began to flow from his body towards the three spoons. Soon the spoons melted into the liquid. And then the guy manipulating the liquid began to form something like a dagger. This was his alchemy skill. With it, the guy could transform various materials, such as metal, and create new objects. If you read the description of his skill, it listed the capabilities of his skill. This was the purification of materials, synthesis, and processing of materials made it possible to create new objects using the means of synthesizing materials. The skill also made it possible to evaluate the alchemical properties of materials. The guy was thinking that he still had a lot to strive for, and he was going to perfectly possess the skill of alchemy. After that, he dreamed of opening his own workshop and naming it Alchemist Thor so he couldn't die here. While Thor was looking at the knife in his hand inside the carriage outside, one of the cavalrymen said that they would arrive at the border soon, so the soldiers should be on the alert. The door opened and a ray of light burst into this pitch darkness with him. The soldier looked at the guy and told him that they had nailed him and told him to get out. The guy looked at him doubtfully but still got out of the carriage. The soldiers began to retreat to the sides. The guy looking around thought that the road that leads to the empire ends here. And with it, the territory of people ends. Right in front of the plains filled with dense vegetation, dark trees were being crushed and behind them mountains. This forest was called the Black Forest. This must be the boundary between the human world and the demon world. The guy looked at the knight and asked what they should do according to the plan. 
who is the lucky one who will lead him to the demons. Maybe they will meet them themselves, or the soldiers are going to just stand there rooted to the spot. The captain among the warriors froze for a second, and then ordered his subordinate to release a signal arrow. One of the archers raised his bow and an arrow flew into the sky with something tied to it. The arrow flew into the dark forest and figures appeared from there. The soldiers became agitated and Thor's eyes narrowed. The first thing he saw was the bull's head, followed by a humanoid body framed by muscles. Surrounded by several overgrown bulls stood a girl in maid's robes. She had slightly pointed ears and the soft smile of Aga's angel. The bulls stopped, and the guy froze when he saw the girl. Looking at the bull, the guy thought that this was the first time he had seen someone like this. Are these really minotaurs? Besides, the guy looked at the girl and wondered if it was an elf. Unlike the guy, the soldiers turned pale and covered in cold sweat and immediately prepared for a fight, saying that they were ferocious demons. Unlike them, the guy swallowed and decided to go ahead. The captain called out to him, but the guy didn't even flinch. As he got closer, the guy thought that he should make a good impression. Smiling, Thor put his hand on the pile and said that he came from the Empire of Dolgaria. Bowing slightly, he introduced himself as Thor Regas, thinking that he would wait for the moment and escape. He needed to put these demons to sleep. The girl smiled easily, curtsied slightly, lifting the hem of her dress and said that she was Mabel Rifrain, an elf. After that, Mabel greeted them, telling them to come to the land of the Demon King. On the orders of the Demon King, she came here to escort the guy. The minotaurs followed the elf, kneeling on one knee and bowing. Surprised by this behavior, the guy thought that they were so polite. He doesn't seem to be treated like a hostage or a victim. Seeing the madness of the guy, the soldiers turned pale and said that he was completely crazy since he came close to the demons and unarmed. After looking at them, the guy disapprovingly said that they were only politely greeted, they should have bothered to respond in kind. The soldier, angry, shouted for this bastard who knows nothing to shut up. Then the soldier said that the ghost with the help of his spells, the elves are able to burn ten people in one attack, and the minotaurs have such power that they easily squeeze the brains out of people. The soldiers, covered with cold sweat running down their faces, said that why would they approach this gathering? It looks like the guy is really not friends with his head. They should always be on the lookout. Looking at them like insects, the guy said that such a definition as a gathering was more suitable for these cowardly soldiers than for this polite demon. The guy was thinking to himself that all this time they were driving him in a cart like cattle, and they didn't even try to say something. The demons showed more courtesy. Turning to the demons, the guy said that his escorts had behaved rudely, so he asked to accept his apology. The girl looked at the guy in surprise, who put his hand on his heart and said that he was the eldest son of Duke Regas, Tor Regas. By order of his highness the emperor, he had to disturb these lands with his arrival. He knows practically nothing about the demon state, so if he accidentally behaves rudely, he apologizes for it. Listening to him, the girl fell silent for a second, which disturbed the guy, and then the elf began to approach him and looked at him with a bright smile and sparkling eyes, said that it was the first time she had heard such a polite greeting from someone from the Empire, since the lands of the Demon King are in the very north. There are many places that are difficult to reach, but she hoped that the guy would be fine with them. She is very pleased to meet Mr. Messenger. The surprised guy looked blankly at Mabel and thought that he should give up running and start scouting first. Smiling awkwardly, the guy said that he wanted to get to know them. At that time, one of the soldiers came up with a paper and told them to sign it. Seeing that the soldier did not want to come closer, the guy took the paper from the trembling soldier's hands and grinned. The soldier was thinking about not telling him that this guy was a victim. Thor approached Mabel and she gently smiled and signed and then said that the messenger's transfer was over. From here you will have to go through the forest and in places the road can be difficult, so they have prepared assistants who, if necessary, can carry the guy and his things. The overgrown bulls approached the frightened soldiers and told them to provide luggage transportation, but the soldiers only recoiled from fear. Turning in fear, they all ran away screaming that the demons were violating the non-aggression agreement. Looking at them like idiots, the guy broke out in a cold sweat, and the girl stared in a stupor, sighing. The guy turned around and then Mabel called him and smiled and said that it looked like Mr. Messenger was not afraid of them at all. It's the first time she's met such a brave man. The guy paused for a second and said that he would not call it courage. And then, smiling at the girl, he added that there was a non-aggression pact between humans and demons, and it would be at least rude to show fear without an obvious reason. Stepping onto the grass, the guy thought that everything had happened like that. But now he is walking through the forest accompanied by minotaurs, who kindly help him where he could have walked alone. After a while, the elf told the guy that if he got tired, he should immediately tell him about it. Smiling, the guy said that everything was fine, thinking that if you compare them with imperial soldiers, it's like heaven and earth. Walking surrounded by minotaurs, the guy looked around and thought that it was difficult to move around this area, but surprisingly, he did not feel tired at all. Speaking of which, as soon as they entered the demon territory, his well-being improved significantly. 
He did not feel this way on the territory of the Empire. It was the energy that overwhelmed his body. Suddenly, at this time, a voice rang in the guy's head and a notification came that the absorption of the magical energy of the element darkness was completed. It was followed by a new notification saying that along with the element light, earth, water, fire, wind, the absorption of six basic magical elements has been completed. Therefore, the alchemy skill will be replaced by the higher alchemy skill. After that, a new notification popped up, saying that the material preparation skill was fully awakened. The attribute addition skill is also fully awakened. After these two notifications, a new one appeared, saying that the skill assessment was awakened. Surprised by these voices in his head, the guy wondered what it was and mentally asked for the skills to show up. A window popped up in front of the guy with information about his skills. The highest alchemy was in the first place, and in his description it was said that the highest rank of the alchemy skill is the highest alchemy. It is only available after absorbing six basic magic elements. It is possible to create equivalents based on information about the abilities and appearance of objects. The following skills are also available. After these words, there are other skills at the bottom. The first was the preparation of materials, the description of which stated that the preparation of materials allows the creation of materials using their own magical power. The skill provides access to the synthesis and creation of new materials. It also provides access to the processing of materials and giving them the desired shape. The materials available for creation depend on the level. The next skill was adding attributes, the description of which said that the guy could add any attributes to the created material. The number of attributes that can be added depends on the material. The last of the skills was assessment. The description of the skill stated that the assessment allows you to evaluate the attribute, material and properties of an item. The information received by the ghost assessment is recorded in the skill. Surprised by all these changes, the guy wondered if the alchemy skill had evolved. In addition, he could now create materials using only his mana. Does such a skill really exist? The guy concentrated on magic and doubtfully reading the descriptions of skills thought that if it is indicated in the description, then it is really possible, but it is even too convenient. Thor could only assume that due to his lack of combat skills, all his abilities had gone into the higher alchemy skill. When the guy stopped, Mabel noticed this and looked at him and asked what was wrong. But when the guy didn't answer, she asked him to tell her if he felt bad. Looking at Thor with concern, she reported that the magical power in the lands of humans and demons varies greatly, so the guy's well-being can deteriorate dramatically. After hearing about the magical power, enlightenment came to the guy and turning around, he asked the girl that darkness was the main element in the territory of demons. The girl nodded and said that he was absolutely right, and then added that in humans, on the contrary, the main element is light. The guy nodded and said that she was right. Then he added that besides this, fire and earth also prevail in the empire. Fire represents the power to fight the invaders, and the earth is inviolability. Suddenly, a realization came to the guy's head and he realized that his skill had awakened because he had been imbued with the element of darkness in the lands of demons. In the lands of demons, the element of light prevails over darkness, but it's the opposite, darkness dominates light. Before that, he was in the imperial capital and could not accumulate the element of darkness in sufficient quantity because there was little of it there, and to awaken the highest alchemy, it was necessary to absorb all six basic elements. After stepping onto the land of demons, Thor absorbed a large amount of dark energy. Thus, the conditions for the awakening of the supreme alchemy were fulfilled, that's what just happened. While the guy was talking about his own at this time, one of the minotaurs turned to Mr. Messenger and Mrs. Mabel. The minotaur reported that the road becomes uneven from here, so they must be careful. The girl thanked him, but then it slipped. The guy instinctively turned around and noticed this and quickly gave his hand and the girl grabbed him, but her pendant fell to the ground. This shocked Mabel, and the guy was puzzled. The worried minotaur told the girl about her pendant and she awkwardly said that it looked like she had caught on a branch, bending over the pendant. She heard the minotaur beg for forgiveness, saying that they should have been more attentive. But the girl picked up the pendant and said that there was nothing wrong with that. The chain was initially slightly broken. The Minotaur said with concern that but she really cherished this pendant. Her mother, the girl, looking at the pendant with a sad smile, said that everything was fine. She asked them not to worry. Seeing this, the guy came up and said that he could try to fix it if Mabel would let him do it. Then he added that he had repaired broken chains many times. The surprised girl asked that the guy was an artisan. Hearing this, the guy fell silent thinking that in the Empire he could not even be called an alchemist. The only job he did was repairing items using his skill. He did not have his own alchemy workshop so he could not accept orders, however, he always wished for this moment. Smiling broadly, the guy put his hand on the pile and said that he was not a craftsman but an alchemist. He is the alchemist Torrigas to entrust Mabel to him to fix her chain. 
The surprised minotaurs and the elf looked at the guy and then Mabel asked if she could ask a favor from the guest. The guy smiled and said that everything was fine. The guy swallowed, held out the pendant and said that this pendant had been passed down in her family from generation to generation. It's a keepsake from her mother. Since it's possible to fix it, Mabel asked the guy to do it. The alchemist took the pendant in his hands and smiled and said that he would do everything in his power. Crouching down, the guy looked at the pendant and using the skill of evaluation, the highest alchemy guy looked at the pendant. The pendant began to emit light energy and a new notification with the evaluation result popped up in front of the guy. Words appeared next to the pendant, saying that it was a pendant with a water spirit stone, with the attribute water. Then there was a description that said that the pendant was blessed by the spirits of water. The pendant was made of a water magic stone. It was written in parentheses that it was damaged and the details were unknown. Durability is also reduced due to old scratches. The guy nodded to himself and said that he understood now. The chain was worn out and therefore burst, and some details are unknown. And besides, it lacks links. The guy thought it would be enough if he just added the water attribute to the ghost creation. Concentrating. The guy thought that metals were born from the element of earth and this statement is true for any metal. With the help of preparing materials, the ghost will be able to create metal using magical power. He has to imagine how mana flows in and then sort of mix it up. And as a result, the repair is completed. From the light of the guy's magical power, the broken chain began to unite and now it was like new. Seeing this, the bulls asked how this was even possible. The chain became whole again. The surprised girl was covered in cold sweat running down her face, saying that this guy created metal out of nothing. Looking at this, the guy blushed slightly, thinking that the minotaurs were very surprised. In truth, Thor himself was also surprised. He did not think that the preparation of materials really creates materials only from mana. Is this really the ultimate alchemy? Handing the pendant to the girl, the guy informed her that everything was ready. This was the first service, so there might be flaws. He can inspect it again later. The girl didn't say anything, and this put the guy in an awkward position and he looked at her. The girl raised her head and called Mr. Messenger, not Thor, and with tears in her eyes joyfully said that she was very grateful. Her mother's pendant is now new. The guy wondered what novelty the girl was talking about, and then realized that she meant that broken part of the chain and therefore smiled and said that it was his business. With a glint in her eyes, the elf and the minotaurs surrounded the guy. The girl asked that Thor was probably a very famous alchemist. The minotaurs also said that they are also Blagadar. The other minotaur, looking at him with admiration, said that the guy fixed it so easily, even the dwarves couldn't do it. The guy recoiled from such attention and asked them not to talk all at once, while the minotaurs admired him, saying that a great man had arrived. The guy was in a state of prostration, thinking that it was strange. It was the first time he received such gratitude for using a skill. In the empire, his skill was considered useless and ridiculed. His own father considered him worthless and wanted him dead. But looking at those smiles, he understood now. This is how alchemists feel in the world outside the empire. Fixing something that was very dear to someone and seeing their happy smiles made him happy too. Maybe that's why the alchemist he read about in history books continued to hone his skill. He had heard that before the Age of Heroes, the creation of items such as magic swords and shields was common for alchemists. Perhaps the alchemists created more and more new items in an attempt to eliminate the mistakes of the previous one. Smiling, the girl asked Thor to just call her Mabel. The guy smiled broadly and said that then he couldn't wait for her to show him everything here. The girl turned with a wink and a smile and said that it would be so. That's how the new life of the alchemist Thor began. The carriage was traveling along the road filled with herbs. And Thor was sitting inside the carriage, looking at the surroundings and thinking that this is how the lands of the Demon King look like. Outside the carriage window, endless plains stretched out, and in the distance a wide river flowed along which ships passed. And on the decks of the ships there were newts, humanoid fish, people. As the carriage progressed, the guy saw more and more new species that were here. Like mermaids, they are the opposite, even bears carrying something. Smiling, the guy said that there seemed to be a lot of different residents here. In the Empire, these lands are called the Domains of Chaos and Discord, saying that you will not have time to set foot on these lands, as you will be devoured by monsters, as well as the fact that demons kidnap people. In fact, everything is different. Everyone lives a normal life, and the atmosphere here is much more peaceful than in the Empire. Smiling, Mabel said that to compensate for the lack of hands, every resident is doing everything in his power. The reason is that the lands of the Demon King are sparsely populated. The guy looked at Mabel and nodded, saying that this was a general zeal. The girl looked at Thor and said that soon he would be able to get a job here. Did he think about what he would like to do? Surprised, the guy asked that he too get a job and the girl said that of course it was so. It was a little strange, because he was sent here as a hostage. The guy looked at the elf and asked with interest that he had heard that people had been sent here before, where are they now? The girl thoughtfully remembered something and said that it seemed the last time was 50 years ago. 
Mabel hadn't been born then, so she'd only heard rumors. It seems that the previous one who arrived here almost immediately went home. The surprised guy asked that he had gone home and the girl said that it was probably because he had not found a suitable case for himself. The girl sighed and said that despite this, trying to walk through this forest alone is quite dangerous. So they wanted to see him off, but he ended up just secretly leaving. The guy bowed his head and realized how things were. In the lands of the Demon King, they believe that guests and messengers arrive to them, therefore they treat them with respect. In the Empire, everything is brighter. They're sending people out as hostages and victims, which is why they're trying to escape. They ran away ignoring the order, so they did not return to the Empire. As a result, they were considered missing. Mabel looked at the guy with complicated feelings on his face and asked if he could stay here. The guy asked with interest what the girl meant, and she took the guy's hand in her hands and said that there were no more talented alchemists like him in the lands of the Demon King. Making puppy eyes, the girl asked the guy to help them, and in return she will do everything possible to make it comfortable to live here. The guy, at first surprised by such a request, then smiled and said that he had come as a sign of friendship between their countries. Although he said so, but to tell the truth, he was also preparing to escape. He was going to come up with an escape plan as soon as they arrived at the castle, but now it makes no sense, because no one will restrict his freedom here. Besides, Mabel is an elf, which gave him the opportunity to call himself an alchemist. Thanks to her, he finally understood what it was like when someone appreciated what you were doing. He does not want to betray the girl's hopes placed on him, so he smiled and said that while he was here, he would do everything possible for the good of this country. Delighted with this answer, the girl smiled broadly and said that she was very grateful for this. Then a happy Mabel informed them that they would arrive at the castle in about an hour. Upon arrival, the guy will have an audience with the demon lord. The guy heard this and introduced the demon king, a powerful demon running these lands. In order to stay here, he must certainly gain his favor. Mabel and the Minotaurs were friendly with him then. He was wondering what kind of demon king he was. After a while, they were in the palace, in the throne room and sat bowing on one knee. First of all was Thor himself, followed by Mabel and four Minotaurs. There was a demon standing in front of the guy, as well as two guards standing to the side. The guy was a little nervous, which caused him to break out in cold sweat running down his face. The girl looked at him with a smile, and the guy sighed and began to calm him down. The demon in the black tuxedo looked at him but said nothing. At this time, one of the Minotaur guards loudly announced that the demon king Rukia Everjord had arrived. The man looked at Thor and asked that this was their guest from the Empire. Vladika of demons had a mask and a hood from under which two twisted horns came out. Looking from under the mask, the demon king introduced himself as Ruki Evergard, and then asked the guy that he must be Thor Rigas from the Empire of Dulgaria. The guy, looking firmly ahead, said that he was eating like that. Emitting a gloomy aura, the demon king said that he would ask directly what Thor could do. Since the Empire chose him, it means he must have some knowledge or skills. Looking at this gloomy demon, the guy swallowed and said that he knows a little alchemy. The guy was thinking to himself that before arriving here, he kept thinking if that if he was treated like a hostage, then he needed to try to come to an understanding, and maybe then he could finally do alchemy, if the demon king liked it. With these thoughts, the guy stared firmly into the face of the demon king. Seeing such a firm look, the demon king chuckled and said that it was interesting. At this time, the demon in the black tuxedo, who was Chancellor Kelv, said that this was a craft that did not exist in the domain of the demon king. The Empire is a frightening country since they have so many alchemists that they decided to send one of them to another state. Hearing such a guy turn pale and covered in cold sweat running down his face, thinking that everything was wrong because they just consider alchemists useless. The Demon King called Thor Regis and said that they would prepare a workplace for him, which he could dispose of at his discretion. The surprised guy asked if this meant that they would allow him to work as an alchemist. The demon king nodded, said that it was so, and then asked the guy if he had any wishes. The surprised guy pulled himself together and said that it would be convenient if his room was located next to the workshop. Upon hearing this, the demon king asked if there was anything else. Then, slightly covered in cold sweat, he said that he needed some equipment for alchemy. While he was saying this, he couldn't believe that someone had accepted him so easily. After hearing the guy's demands, the demon king told him to make a list of necessary things so that they could prepare everything. After that, the demon king called the guy by name, said that he would be able to use his alchemical skills to their full potential and create whatever he saw fit. If anything interested the demons, they would buy it. If it turns out to be useful to the people, then they will organize mass production, whether Tor Regas agrees with this. Bowing his head, the guy nodded and said that he agreed, let him do as he wished. After that, the guy said he had a question. Already getting up from his seat, the demon king said to let him ask. Then the guy asked why he was willing to go so far. He certainly appreciates the kindness of his highness, but he is an outsider and came from the empire. Why is his highness kind to a stranger? He thought for a long time, but could not figure out the reason. 
There was silence in the hall for a second. And then the Demon King said that it was to learn something new from people. The surprised guy raised his head and the Demon King continued, saying that once upon a time demons were defeated by humans because they possessed extensive knowledge. On the side of the people there are heroes called from another world. Surely the guy already knows this. It happened several hundred years ago, in the era of wars between demons and humans. At that time, in order to resist the demons, people summoned heroes from another world. The heroes possessed powerful skills and fought bravely for the benefit of humanity. They aspired to be the strongest on the battlefield for this, willingly fought demons alone to raise their levels. As a result, their thirst for power was passed on to the people of this world. The idea of strength is everything has become a heroic legacy for their empire. In the last battle, the heroes defeated the demon king and the demons were banished to the northern lands and the world became what it is now. Having fulfilled their duty, the heroes returned to their native world. Now, heroes are no longer called upon. However, their belongings and knowledge have remained to this day. The surprised guy said that it was about 200 years ago. When the demon king heard this, he said that it didn't matter how many years had passed. The demons have been defeated by humans and they must learn from this lesson. That's why they want to learn new things from people. Demons no longer crave to fight humans, but they must continue to learn from humans. The demons have lost a lot of soldiers in this war, and they can't let their sacrifice go to waste. Surprised by this revelation, the guy thought that this was indeed the policy of the demon king. Looking at his hand, the demon king said that in order for their country to one day stand side by side with the empire, they also need the help of someone like Thor Regis. This is indeed a revelation for Thor. The demon king is the king of this country, and he recognized his alchemist's skills. Here he will be free to create and create whatever he wants. He just caught fire with it. Clenching his fist, he decided that he had to try. With supreme alchemy, he will create many amazing things for the people. With such determination, the guy put his hand on his heart and smiled and said that first of all he would like to demonstrate what his alchemy is capable. May the Demon King accept this as a tribute to his hospitality. Upon hearing this, the Demon King agreed. Then the Chancellor told the Demon King that Thor Regis must be tired after a long journey. To this, the Demon King nodded and said that he thought the Chancellor was right, and then turning to the guy said that it had been a long journey and that Thor should rest properly first. With these words, the audience ended. After that, the Demon King, looking at his subjects, said that now he needed to say something. Sitting on the throne, the Demon King looked at her three subordinates. Next to her, a little below, stood the Chancellor in a suit. Then the Demon King said that the reason he had gathered everyone was none other than the arrival of a new guest of Tor Regith. The three subordinates were the Commander of the Minotaurs, the Commander of the Lizard Assault Squad and the Commander of the Magical Elf Squad. Looking at them, the Demon King said that although he thought they understood anyway, he would tell them just in case. It is completely forbidden to harm Tor Regis. The squad leaders and their subordinates behind them nodded in unison and said that it would be so. The Demon King continued, telling them not to forget the pride of their people. They should treat Tor Regis with respect and try to learn a lot from conversations with him. Bowing his head, the commander of the magical squad of elves asked for forgiveness for the fact that they aroused the suspicions of the Demon King and added that they did not intend to harm the guest. But is there anything to learn from a guest of the Empire? After hearing the words of the commander of the Magical Elf Squad, the commander of the Lizard Assault Squad asked him not to start, but the Demon King was already looking at the commander of the Magical Elf Squad along with the Chancellor. Seeing this, the commander of the Magical Elf Squad smiled maliciously with a mad face and said that he thought they should remind their guest of the power of the Demon King. First, they have to show the army of Ifrits to make it clear how terrible demons can be. Upon hearing this, the Demon King released a huge amount of aura, and seeing this, the commander of the Magical Elf Squad shuddered and was covered with cold sweat running down his face. The Demon King, looking at him with gloomy energy, said that to show how terrible demons can be, yes, of course it makes some sense. This is a great chance to take advantage of the opportunity and show the guest from the Empire the full power of their army. Of course, these are excellent offers. The delighted commander of the Magical Elf Squad raised his head and said that it was so. He is glad that the Demon King has approved his proposal. But the Demon King frowned and released even more energy, suppressing everyone and everything, and shouted that he had heard in the elf's words a contemptuous attitude towards the Empire. They must have forgotten that their country began to prosper only because their ancestors were afraid of people. Overwhelmed by such energy, all the commanders broke out in cold sweat and immediately looked down. The Demon King continued his speech without getting up from his seat. He said that there are a lot more of them. And besides, people own weapons that are much more powerful than demons. The commanders should take a close look at the current empire. This country continues to expand its borders and build up its military power to this day. So why does this old man know all this and say that they have nothing to learn from the empire? Scared shitless, the commander of the magical elf squad hit anyone on the floor shouting that he was very sorry. 
raising his hand. The Demon King said that the alchemist Thor Rigas was their guest, and he's an alchemist who decided to work for the good of their country. He allowed him and Kel to evaluate his products and distribute them for the use of the people. Thanks to this they will be able to learn more about the culture of the Empire. The Chancellor, seeing the hotly shouting Demon King, said that he thought the order had reached everyone's ears. Then the Chancellor looked at him indifferently and said that no matter what, Tor Rigas was from the Empire. Still, it's worth being vigilant. Nodding at this, the Demon King called Mabel. She quickly appeared here and bowed and began to listen. The Demon King ordered her to keep an eye on Thor and give him support. The girl smiled and said that everything would be as his highness wished. At that moment, the Chancellor asked Mabel if Thor had repaired her pendant. The girl touched the pendant and nodded, smiling. Then the Demon King asked that the girl's pendant was made of magical silver. The girl raised her head and said that the Demon King was absolutely right. The Demon King said that this meant that Thor Rigas repaired it without the ghost having the required materials. Mabel nodded and said that she had seen it with her own eyes. The Chancellor held out his hand and said that it was certainly possible to find out from the assessment. In response, Mabel held out the pendant. After taking it, the Chancellor used the assessment and looked at the pendant with surprise, sweating slightly. Looking up, he called Mabel and asked about the fact that this pendant belonged to her mother. The girl anxiously said that it was so. The pendant has been passed down in their family for many generations in a row, but during this time it has completely lost its power, because the water stone in it was broken long ago. The Chancellor, showing the effect, said that the alchemist had restored it as well. Because of these words, everyone looked at the pendant in surprise, which began to emit light. Raising his hand high, the Chancellor said, Thor Rigas repaired the pendant with the Stone of the Spirits of Water. This could not be done by any artisan of the land of the Demon King. Mabel, whose pendant was the reason for such a miracle, said with wide eyes that she couldn't believe she would believe it. The Chancellor, with an indifferent face, said that well, this is the truth and two conclusions can be drawn from this. The first is that there are alchemists who are able to repair a magic item in the blink of an eye. The second is that there are many alchemists of this level in the Empire, since they are ready to send one to another country. Clenching his teeth, the Demon King said that it was understandable. The Empire would have scattered valuable personnel. With cold sweat dripping down his face, the Chancellor said that besides that, perhaps the Empire wanted to show its strength in this way. After all, if there are many alchemists like him in the Empire, then their resistance is pointless. At these words, all three commanders turned pale and were covered with cold sweat running down their faces. Then the Chancellor stopped to think and said that it was possible that the Empire was stupid enough that it could not appreciate his abilities. Upon hearing this, the Demon King told the Chancellor not to talk nonsense. It can't be that the Empire doesn't know anything about his abilities. Don't underestimate people. Humbly bowing his head, the Chancellor bowed and apologized to His Highness for this. Then, raising his head, he informed them that, as before, they would be vigilant. Upon hearing him, the Demon King said that he was relying on the Chancellor. Then the Demon King asked him to prepare a suitable room for their guest as well as a workshop. After a while, Mabel walked along the corridor of the castle, thinking that she was rather late. Thor must be very nervous in a new place. Entering the room, the girl smilingly apologized for making him wait and said that she would show him where the room was. At this time, Thor, with a twinkle in his eyes, was holding in his hand some kind of vase with a flower inside. Seeing the excited look of the guy who carefully put the vase back in place, she asked if there was anything that interested him. The guy, smiling happily, coughed dryly and excitedly said that he was absolutely interested in here. For example, this gorgeous fireplace, or that buffet, or that sofa. He is interested in what materials they are made of and who made them. Smiling, the girl thought that it looked like she was worried for nothing, and said out loud that they would have as much time as they wanted to discuss it, but first, she had to show him his room. With these words, they both left and were already walking down the corridor when they met two lizards. One of them was wearing white clothes, and the other was wearing a black t-shirt. The one in white said that by order of his excellency, they had to escort them. The girl looked at these lizards with concern and became worried, because they had no weapons with them, but they could easily kill Thor with their claws. Even if they are afraid of Thor, you should not act so obviously. Thor is also unlikely to like it. But despite the fears of the girl, the guy smiled and thanked the two lizards and said that he hoped that they would become friends. Seeing this, the girl thought that apparently Thor was not bothered at all. Suddenly, at this time, something came into the guy's head and he turned around and asked Mabel that he still didn't know so much. The excited girl asked about what happened. Walking ahead of the lizards, the guy said that he was just meeting lizards for the first time and was therefore a little surprised. The surprised girl squinted at the guy and thought that this was the first time she had ever heard a person call them correctly. Usually people talked about lizards as bipedal lizards or nasty reptiles. The girl nodded and said that there is something to marvel at. Because lizards are very strong, besides they have powerful protection, it is not surprising that they look unusual for a human. 
Thor said that he didn't talk about this revelation. He just thought that it must be hard for them to change clothes because the fabric clings to their scales. The surprised girl asked what the guy meant and he said with a twinkle in his eyes that it was his duty as an alchemist to design clothes for them that they would not be uncomfortable wearing. The girl looked at him with stupor and the two lizards walking behind looked back at each other not with cold sweat. A girl excitedly asked what Tordale thought about such things. And the guy smiled and said that of course it was so. Then turning around the guy said that he really wanted to know more about how representatives of different races live here. Thinking about it, the girl looked at the guy. And he continued, saying that in the lands of the Demon King there are a variety of inhabitants, from demons to demi-humans. And for sure they all have their own problems that they face on a daily basis. Thor looked at the girl with determination and said that by solving their problems, he would be able to gain a variety of experiences and hone his skills and one day he would definitely create something that could change this world for the better. The girl looked at him with her eyes wide open, but the guy did not finish, continuing. He said that he was grateful to his highness for allowing him to work here and Thor wanted to thank him properly for that. Looking at him, the girl thought that it was unlikely that Thor was lying. This becomes clear only when the gaze falls on his shining eyes. For him, races and countries do not matter. He really loves alchemy and is seriously going to help others. Seeing this, the girl couldn't help but admire him, thinking that the guy was really an amazing person. With determination in her voice, the girl nodded and said that so be it. She Mabel Rifrain would help Tor Regas in any way she could. The guy also bowed and said that the feeling was mutual and added that they would definitely become friends. The girl blushed slightly and thought about whether it was possible that she would help a person who could turn the tide of history. Since childhood, Mabel Rifrain had a hard time because she could not use magic and this was taboo among elves. Her relatives asked her what kind of elf she was if she couldn't use magic. Is it really because she has human blood flowing in her? How can she call herself an elf after that? Since childhood, she has been kicked out everywhere, shouting at the little girl and saying that she is useless and should get out of here. With a sharp jump, the girl with tears in her eyes screamed to be left alone. Panting from such a nightmare, she cried. Those memories came back to her. Getting up from her seat, the girl opened the curtains and wondered if she would ever be able to overcome this. The rays of the warm sun entered the room and fell on her feet. Looking down, the girl touched them expectantly, but burst into tears again. Her legs were like ice as usual. If only his susceptibility to cold would disappear along with the childhood trauma. Looking towards the table where two socks were lying, Mabel said that although she was embarrassed to put them on in front of Thor, she couldn't walk like that. With these thoughts, the girl put on her thick socks. At this time, Thor Regas, looking at the splendor spread out in front of him, all lit up, because everything here was a treasure for him, which he longed for. Smiling broadly, the guy thought that it was just amazing. This warehouse of the Demon King's castle was a treasure trove for artisans. The whole floor is littered with an odd number of interesting things. No sooner had the guy approached the scabbard to examine them better, than the manhole immediately caught on a dented armored shield. Raising his hands high, the guy shouted that this was a class. The Demon King's castle is the best. There's a whole mountain of treasures here. Pausing for a second, the guy slapped himself in the face, thinking that the Demon King had not given him this room out of the kindness of his heart. If he fails to meet expectations, he may be returned to the Empire. Probably the Demon King is waiting for Thor to be able to create something useful here. In order to avoid being thrown away, he must create a thing that will appeal to the Demon King and will be useful to the people. With this determination, the guy clenched his fist. And although he was full of motivation, he couldn't be serious in a situation where his dream came true. Smiling stupidly, the guy began to carry different things, wondering what he would do and what he would create. Maybe anything for the house. He has already suffered enough to test himself and try to create something. What things weren't there? The guy, digging in the warehouse, thought that many things here are like materials. At this time, the guy suddenly came across a book with pictures of some buildings. Putting his hand on it, the guy said that he had never seen such symbols, and thought to himself that most likely no one could understand the content, so they just left it here. The guy opened the book and realized that the letters and pictures here are very finely executed. None of the techniques in this world are capable of this. Looking at the Japanese letters with numbers, the guy thought that most likely this is a book from another world. For sure it was left by the heroes. Covered in cold sweat running down his face, the guy shuddered and thought that he would never have thought that there would be something like this in the castle of the Demon King. But the book was useless if you didn't understand what was written in it. Suddenly, the guy realized something. It was written on the book that it was a product catalog and he understood that. Surprised by this, the guy wondered what the title of the book was and he was able to read it. Is it really because of the assessment skill? His assessment skill was able to read the properties of objects, which is probably why he can read what is written here. Sitting down, the guy opened the book itself, thinking that the ghost of the help of this catalog, it was possible to purchase unique goods and they deliver them all over Japan. 
The guy thought about it and came to the conclusion that Japan should be one of the states in which the heroes live. Without a doubt, this book belonged to the world of heroes. Opening the next page, the guy froze in shock. There was a wellness device in the pages of the book. The description said that it could relieve eye fatigue and eliminate shoulder pain or improve sleep. Seeing this, the guy thought that it looked like they were restoring items from the world of heroes. The guy trembled and realized something. And this realization made him submit to the cold sweat flowing down his body. Did the heroes themselves use it? There were glasses on the new page and their description said that they were vision-enhancing glasses. They improved their eyesight 20 times in just 2 minutes a day. Next was an oxygen capsule for rapid recovery. In just 2 hours, she could restore 10 hours of sleep to someone who uses it. Reading all this, the guy said that it was not surprising that the heroes were the strongest if they used all this. Suddenly, the guy wondered if he could create something similar. Could his higher alchemy do something like that? At that time, Mabel came into the office and called the guy. He flinched in surprise, but the girl didn't seem to notice it. Putting a tray with a cup, a teapot and sugar on the table, she apologized for scaring him. In defense, the girl said that she tried to say that she brought tea, but the guy did not react. Thor seemed very focused. Did he really find something interesting? The guy nodded when he heard this and then showed the book to Mabel. Smiling, he said that this was a book from another world, and then showed his text to the girl and asked if she could read it all. The girl made a thoughtful look, but then regretfully bowed her head and said that she was very sorry, but she did not understand what was written here. The guy nodded and said that he thought so. Getting up from her seat, Mabel began to look around at the same time explaining that sometimes such things get here. The demon king said that his subjects should bring here any things that might be useful at any time. Sullenly, the girl said that this was the logic of someone who did not need to clean up. From such horror coming from the girl, the guy was already sweating. But soon the girl came to her senses and smiled and said that they should not think about it. Going to the table, she took the kettle and asked about a cup of tea. The guy thanked him, but refused, and then the guy's eyes noticed the thick socks that the girl was wearing. With an awkward smile, she lifted her leg and asked that the guy notice this yes, and he's probably wondering why she's doing this. Then the girl walked away and said that she was just very sensitive to the cold. The doctor said it was because of problems with her internal magic flow. The guy bowed his head uncomprehendingly and asked what it was, but thought to himself that he had never heard of such a thing. The girl became sad and said that despite the fact that elves are very good at magic, due to the fact that the movement of magical power is disrupted in her body, she cannot use a spell. Most likely this has to do with her grandmother, because they say that she was a human. That's why one day the elf threw her out. Smiling, the girl said that fortunately she turned out to be good at home economics and cooking, so she was sheltered by the demon king. When the girl raised her head, she saw Thor sobbing in two streams, saying that it probably wasn't easy for Mabel. Seeing this, the girl shuddered and apologized and said that she had stirred up too much. And then she smiled and said that everything was fine, because now she doesn't care about things like not being able to use magic. Besides, now she is very glad that her grandmother was a human being. Suddenly, a realization came to the guy's head and he asked if this was really the reason why she came to meet him. The girl nodded and said that she really wanted to know what people were like, so she was glad that the first person she met was Thor. Smiling sweetly, the girl was slightly embarrassed and said that she was happy. After all, her grandmother belonged to such a wonderful race. Embarrassed, the guy thanked her for such praise, to which the girl giggled sweetly. Seeing this, the guy thought that the lands of the Demon King were amazing after all. It turns out that they used to accept people from other countries just as easily, yes. And Mabel even got a job at the castle of the Demon King, despite the fact that she is a descendant of a human. Then the guy's gaze fell on a book with goods and an idea came into his head and he asked Mabel if she would help him with the experiment. There are two shields on the table. One is white with a diamond-shaped crystal in the center, the other is grayer with a round crystal in the center. The guy next to him was sitting with a book in his hand thinking that in this book, which he found, there was a restorative device for people with poor blood circulation. It was made in the form of a small semi-closed container in which two feet are placed, and on the front part there seemed to be glowing symbol. There was also a name that was a foot bath. In the description of the item, the principle of operation and its general description were written. Vibration and strong water flow warm the feet. People with poor blood circulation can get rid of the cold in their feet and improve blood circulation in their body. In addition, patients will be able to improve the flow of chi by stimulating acupuncture points. There were also contraindications. From the very first use of the instrument, the patient will feel the result. They will get rid of the cold in their legs and live a healthy life. Reading this description, the guy was of course delighted and slightly scared. Well, as expected from a book from the world of heroes, it sounded very convincing. The guy, thinking about the implementation of such a tool, thought about that. That he would probably need magic stones of fire and wind. As materials, he can take old shields from this warehouse. 
One of them is a shield of fire with a gray surface, absorbs enemy attacks, then releases a pillar of flame. But it was impossible to use it now because the internal magic mechanism was completely out of order. The evaluation of the white shield showed that it is a wind shield. He deflects the arrows of enemies with a powerful stream of air. Of course, it cannot be used at the moment, because its magical mechanism is completely out of order. The guy concentrated on the magic that began to flow through his body and wondered if he could get the magic stones out of these shields. If he softens the ghost shields with the help of his skill, it should work. After enveloping two shields with mana, the guy activated higher alchemy and softened the shields. In the end, he still succeeded and took out magic stones from the shields. Raising the shields, the guy smiled and said that he could make a hull out of their base. While the guy was doing this at the same time, the door opened and an excited Mabel came inside, calling Thor and shouting that she had found a beautiful cup. But as soon as she saw how the guy easily squeezes the sewing, she turned pale and asked what happened to the shield. He wasn't like that just now. Taking the bowl, the guy smiled and said that this was the result of using his alchemy. After that, he thanked the girl for the cup. Smiling sweetly, the girl shyly poked at the shield and was surprised to say that it was so soft. The guy also smiled and said that it was so. After that, the guy got ready and concentrated and said that now using materials, he could recreate an object from another world. He activated a higher alchemy skill, and a new notification popped up in front of the guy with a projection of a restoring item from the world of heroes, called a foot bath. Based on the image that appeared, the guy began to prepare materials. Two shields, two mana stones and a bowl dipped into the guy's mana and the guy closed his eyes and concentrated on presenting the thing he wanted to get. He had to imagine how their power poured out of the magic stones and smoothly dissolved in water. He couldn't create an item exactly as it was in the world of heroes, because the description was too short, but using magic stones and power, he can create an item with similar properties. A powerful stream of water that will warm your feet and improve blood circulation. Stimulation of acupuncture points to improve the flow of energy and improve the health of the body were also included in the plants. The wind stone will create a stream, and the fire stone will heat the water. As soon as the image was confirmed, all the items merged into one and the item was successfully created. Looking at this thing, the guy quite said that he had succeeded. Looking at this foot bath, the guy thought that he created this item so he can see all its characteristics. With this thought, the guy used the skill and a new notification with a description of the item popped up in front of him. As mentioned, the item was called a foot bath. He had three attributes, namely fire, water, and wind. In a rarity, he six had two out of three stars. Then there was an explanation that the fire stone heats water. The wind stone creates a stream of water and bubbles. Then there was the instruction that the magic stones must be replaced regularly, because they are expendable. This can be done once a year. Then there was a warning that the bath should be washed with fresh water and also not to use detergents. The item's damage resistance was three full stars. The comment said that it could not be destroyed without the use of magic weapons. At the end, there was a service life of the item for a period of 25 years. After checking, the guy with a twinkle in his eyes picked up the tub and handed it to Mabel, saying that this item could get rid of her sensitivity to cold. It's called a foot bath. The surprised girl with sweat on her face asked that he had already completed the creation of the item. The guy excitedly said that everything was ready, and the girl said in disbelief that less than 10 minutes had passed since she arrived. Are all the alchemists in the empire so amazing? This question made the guy think. He was a hindrance to his family, so he never had a chance to visit the alchemy workshop. Thinking about it, the guy broke out in a cold sweat and looked at Mabel and said that he did not know any alchemists, so he did not know for sure. And his father once, in a fit of anger, told him not to be arrogant, because there are any number of owners of the same skill as him. Doubtfully, the guy awkwardly smiled and said that most likely many people can do this. The startled girl shuddered, and her head began to spin. With cold sweat dripping down her face, she said she couldn't believe that there were many alchemists in the empire who possessed the same abilities as him. The guy smiled and said that there was nothing surprising in this, he just copied a thing from the world of heroes. The girl was still excited and said that in such a short time he had created an item of the world of heroes. The guy, without answering, handed the foot bath to the girl and smiled and said that it was for her. The girl, covered with cold sweat running down her face, doubtfully said that it was true, was an object from the world of heroes created for her. The guy nodded with a smile, saying that he would teach her how to use it, and then he asked if she would show him where the swimming pool was. After a while, the guy stood next to the water and with a foot bath in his hand smiled and said that now he would explain how it works. The chancellor, with an expressionless face, nodded, telling him to show it. The guy, looking at the Chancellor, asked why he was here. The Chancellor said that he wanted to see the work created by Tor Rigas. The guy didn't find anything to say for a second. And then he thought that let him be. Anyway this device was created for use in the territories of the Demon King. The Observer does not place them. 
The guy put the foot bath on the floor and took a bucket, poured water on the foot bath with it and said that first you need to fill the tank with water. Then they have to wait for some time for the water to absorb the energy of the firestone. And when steam appears, everything is ready. After that, the guy looked at Mabel and told her to put her feet in the tub. The girl nodded excitedly and then began to take off her socks and put her feet on the ground and felt a slight itch. Going to the foot bath from which steam was coming, she sat down slightly displaced and put her foot in it. Seeing this, the guy smiled, and the girl, feeling the warmth, said about it. The guy nodded, said that it was good, and then added that there was a magic wind stone on the front of the case, let him try to activate it. This is necessary to activate the vibration mechanism. The girl bent down and pressed the button and immediately felt her legs begin to tremble and the water poured up. Because of this, even her calves became wet. Feeling such pressure under her feet, she blushed and screamed. Then, trembling, she crouched down and said that the flow of water was affecting her sensitive areas. As soon as the stream hit her feet, she felt as if sparks were running all over her body. The chancellor asked what it was, and the guy said it must be the result of the stone's work. Sweating, the girl turned completely red and feeling pleasant emotions. She said that it was so pleasant. The warmth was spreading all over her body. She couldn't take it anymore because she felt like she was in heaven. The guy, looking at the girl's reaction, thought that big changes were taking place in Mabel's body now. Smiling, he realized that it was like a hot spring in the midst of fierce frost. It's like a spring in the middle of the desert. As it was said in the book, the foot bath drove away all the cold. Unlike the guy, the chancellor was nervous seeing this condition of the girl and asked her if she was okay. The girl who fell without restraining her feelings, all red, to the tips of her ears, nodded, saying that everything was fine. Magic seems to be moving inside her body. Surprised, the chancellor exclaimed and turned to the guy and asked about that. So that's what the guy did for the subject of recovery from the world of heroes. The guy said quite calmly that it was so, was there really something wrong with it? The chancellor closed his eyes and said that he also had some knowledge about heroes. According to his information, there is no record of the heroes using any magical items for healing. Most likely, this name hides ordinary items for relieving fatigue. But then why did it have such an impact on Mabel? The guy said there was nothing he could do about it, because it was an item from the world of heroes. The surprised chancellor, sweating, asked how nothing could be done about it. Thor should think about it again. The guy smiled and said that the heroes had powerful skills and magic, right? Thor doubts that in the world where such people came from, it was simple items to relieve fatigue. The chancellor asked that the guy thought so, and the guy smiled and said that he was sure of it. Hearing such confidence, the chancellor thought that this was probably the case, and then fell to the ground and said that he couldn't believe it, not a single healer in their lands could rid Mabel of this ailment, and Thor did it in the blink of an eye, with this healing item. The guy squeezed his eyes shut and thought that he could certainly understand the chancellor's surprise because they had just seen with their own eyes the result of the work of an object from the world of heroes. How advanced were the technologies in their world? Thor is still very far away from them. While they were thinking about it, Mabel's head was spinning. Mabel, who was already weakened by the hot water, said that she thought she could turn it off already, because it was too pleasant, she couldn't take it anymore. The chancellor looked at her and asked how she was feeling. The girl with the hem of her dress turned up smiled and said that everything was fine. Her body seemed to feel lighter, it seemed to her that she felt magic circulating in her. Then the chancellor told her to try to use a spell. Maybe she could still do at least a little. This made the girl think of the old wound, which made her turn pale and say that she did not think she would really be able to use magic. She remembered her childhood and thought about that ever since, she always gave up without even trying. Then her gaze fell on one figure and she clenched her fist. Thor was looking at her with a smile, and so the girl decided to try. With cold sweat dripping down her face, she raised her hands and began to cast a spell. In the name of darkness and wind, the coal black wind, summoning a spell, the girl released it in all directions, which caused all things in this place to fly in all directions. The surprised girl looked at all this without understanding. The chancellor was already sweating seeing Mabel like this, and Thor looked at her with concern. The girl wrapped in mana looked at herself. Tears began to come to her eyes and she asked in disbelief that she had just used magic. Seeing the girl's state of shock, the guy asked if she was okay with him. She said that everyone said she was good for nothing. Since she can't use magic, tears turned into shiny drops fell to the ground. And the girl, blushing, bent over Thor and hugged him with tears in her eyes, shouting that she was very grateful to him. As streams of tears streamed down her face, she said that in fact, she always worried that she couldn't use magic. In her native village, everyone told her that she was not an elf since she could not use magic. But now, she can be really useful. She will be able to help everyone with her magic. Thor was her benefactor. At this time, the guy clutched in the girl's chest could not say anything and was covered in cold sweat, and seeing this, the chancellor asked Mabel that she was sure that she would not strangle him now. 
When she came to, the girl immediately jumped back, and the guy, blushing and with steam coming out of his face, sighed and said that it was nothing, and then thanked her. The girl asked with interest why he was grateful, and he blushed and awkwardly smiled and told her not to think about it. Not only the magical circulation, but her susceptibility to cold has also healed, yes. The girl played with her feet and exclaimed that it was so. Her feet were warm now, and she wasn't cold at all, it was just amazing. The guy, looking at the joyful Mabel, thought that he did not expect anything else from the world of heroes. Looking at the girl's joy, the guy thought that he was still happy to create objects that could please others. After that, the guy said that after that Mabel could take this tub for herself. But the Chancellor immediately interrupted him, saying that this item would be under his highness control. The surprised guy turned around and said what the Chancellor meant and added that he had done it to help Mabel heal her legs. The Chancellor nodded, saying that this was certainly the case, but they could not leave unattended an object that could activate magical power inside the body of whoever used it. If this thing falls into the wrong hands, it could upset the balance of power in the lands of the Demon King. Upon hearing this, the guy handed the foot bath to the Chancellor, thinking that since that was the case, there was nothing he could do about it. He'll have to agree. If he starts an argument with the Chancellor, Mabel may have problems. With these thoughts, the guy told the Chancellor that he understood the circumstances. The Chancellor took a foot bath and said that they would set a decent price for this invention. Paying with gold coins is fine. This currency is used in the Demon Lands. Not understanding what the Chancellor was saying, the guy asked, in a stupor, what he meant. The Chancellor himself also did not understand the guy's reaction and asked if something was wrong. The guy's pupils swirled in spirals, and he turned pale and covered with cold sweat flowing down his body. Excitedly, he said that he had just created what he wanted, and that they were going to pay for it. The Chancellor, still not understanding what was going on, asked what was wrong with Thor, and he coughed dryly, pulled himself together, thinking that even though he received payment in the Empire when he used his skills, but it was mere pennies. Besides, he couldn't choose how to use the skill. For the most part, he just carried out the maintenance of those items that were brought to him at work. But here everything is different. He can create things of his choice, and moreover, he will be able to receive not only gratitude for it, but also a reward, so he should not miss such a chance. The guy put his hand to his heart and said that he had a request. Instead of gold coins, can they give him magic stones? The Chancellor tilted his head, thinking about his own. Then, folding his arms across his chest, the Chancellor said that he thought that Thor knew that depending on the way magic stones were used, they could also become dangerous weapons. Upon hearing this, the guy said that in this case he would make an application, and they could only give him the stones that he seemed to need to create objects. He was also going to make a plan for using magic stones. The Chancellor did not understand, asked again and the guy nodded and began to explain that he would create items for use in the territory of demons. In return the Demon King would supply him with consumables. The Chancellor, who stood in a stupor, looked at Thor and with a gloomy face asked if Thor was not against the fact that his inventions would not be used by people. Despite the atmosphere, the guy asked about what he had to do. The guy thought to himself that no matter how amazing an object was created, it would make no sense if no one uses it. With these thoughts, the guy smiled and said that he wanted everyone to be able to use his items. He wants to hear a variety of opinions about them, eliminate all the flaws and thus bring his inventions to perfection and then one day, he will be able to surpass the technology of the world of heroes. Upon hearing this speech, Mabel smiled, and the Chancellor was speechless, and after a second, said that he would talk about it with the Lord. After a while, the surprised cry of the Demon King rang out in the throne room. The surprised Demon King asked about that that the magic item made by Thor Riga's skill cured Mabel's illness. The Chancellor bowed and said that it was true, he had witnessed it himself. The dark-faced Demon King said he couldn't believe it. Medicine from all corners of the Demon Lands tried to cure her, while the Alchemist did it in less than one day. Raising his head, the Chancellor said that most likely the reason was that Thor Riga's used two types of magic in his device. The Demon King pronounced the name of the footbath as if savoring these words and said that if he understood correctly, the Fire Stone was used for heating and the wind stone creates a stream and bubbles in the water. The Chancellor nodded, saying that it was so, in other words, in water these two elements are mixed. The Demon King, not believing this, said that it was nonsense, how is this possible? The Chancellor, without refuting the words of the Demon King, said that he had no other assumptions. In addition, Mabel's predominant element is water. There is every reason to believe that it is easier for her to absorb magical power through water. Thus, the heat created by the fire element was able to spread the ghost of the wind element throughout the body, thereby healing the susceptibility to cold, at the same time improving the circulation of the magical flow. After studying this, the Demon King said that Thor had thought it all out to the smallest detail, it was quite frightening. 
The Chancellor with a dark face said that he dared to assume that the guy was among the top five alchemists in the world. Upon hearing this, the Demon King said that on the other hand, he just copied an item from the world of heroes, didn't he? The Chancellor, covered in cold sweat running down his face, said that this was true. But in the legends of heroes there was no mention of objects that could heal serious illnesses or strengthen the body. Basically, it says that the heroes used recovery magic and enhancement magic for these purposes. Clutching the wall with trembling all over his body, the Chancellor continued, saying that, even more so, there is not a single mention of an object capable of perfectly regulating the circulation of magic, which at the same time looks like an ordinary container with hot water and bubbles. What kind of alchemist is this anyway? He makes one doubt his knowledge of the Chancellor's history. The Demon King looked at the servant and said that he did not understand much either. Leaving this topic aside, the Chancellor can give this item to Mabel. Upon hearing this, the Chancellor asked the Demon King if he was sure. The Demon King said that he values Mabel as a subordinate, so he sees no reason to do otherwise. The Chancellor thoughtfully said that, by the way, it seems that Mabel did not get close to Thor badly. It is not at all typical for her to open her heart to someone else. The Demon King looked at the Chancellor and asked what he meant, to which he put his hand on his heart and said that because of the inability to use magic, Mabel was kicked out of her native elf village, and even after arriving at the castle, she was reluctant to get close to anyone. However, Thor was clearly an exception. The Demon King grew gloomy with every next word, but the Chancellor continued, saying that in this regard, he had a suggestion. Why not let Mabel marry Thor if she wants to? In that case, Thor will have a good reason to stay in the demon lands, or it's fashionable to convince Mabel to enter into a political marriage. The Chancellor's last words were the last straw and the Demon King exploded with energy, shouting that this would not happen. From such rage, the Chancellor was covered in cold sweat running down his face and he was suppressed by the pressure coming from the Demon King. The Demon King said that he had known Mabel since she was very young. She is dear to him as a subordinate. Even though they live in such a so-called world now, demons will never bend under people. The Chancellor stood up and said that His Highness had calmed down. Emitting dark energy, the Demon King got up from his seat and said that this would not happen. His patience broke. Stepping forward, he said that he was going to personally assess what the alchemist Thor Regas was like. At this time, in the mansion of Duke Regas. In the dining room, the Duke cut a juicy steak with a knife and a spruce with a fork. While he was eating, he simultaneously said that they had finally got rid of this parasite. Even breathing became easier for him. The butler, who poured wine into his glass, smiled and said that the duke was absolutely right. He thinks that by this time the demons had already torn him apart. From the fact that the duke presented this, he did not smile freely. His lips couldn't stop at a simple smile and stretch to the point of madness. While drinking wine, he said that it was a fitting end for such trash. At this time, the captain of the knights came into the room and informed the butler that the imperial palace had requested a magic sword, which they were leaving for repair. The surprised butler asked if they had accepted such an assignment. The knight asked the butler what they had forgotten. They were tasked with restoring the magic sword from the time of the heroes so that Her Majesty the Princess could use it. The butler stroked his chin thoughtfully and said that he remembered now. He left a request for repairs in the civil service. Well, if that's the case, he's going to check if he's ready. After a while, the butler shouted in the civil service office asking how they couldn't fix it. Thor's former boss, holding out a sword and a handkerchief, nodded, saying that they sent it to the Alchemist Association, but they were refused. Picking up the documents, the pale butler said that, but it was immediately written that the repair was 80% complete. Upon hearing this, Thor's boss looked away with cold sweat dripping down his face and said that about it. Looking away, the boss said that their employee was actually repairing the sword. The surprised butler asked what the boss meant and he shook his head and said that the fact was that their budget was being cut from year to year, so as far as possible, they tried to fulfill requests on their own. Sighing, the butler asked to call this employee, to which the boss smiled broadly and said that he had been fired. The butler, who had just calmed himself down, shouted in anger about what the boss meant. What an idiot missed such an employee. And after that, he calls himself the manager. Trembling, the fat man said that the butler was wrong. They didn't want to fire him at all. Enraged by this attitude, the butler shouted at the manager to go to hell and then asked about who this person was. The man smiled and said that it was Tor Conan. And then seeing the shocked face of the butler, he said that the truth is that Conan is his mother's surname. Now that he has returned to the duke's house, he must have become Regus. Then the manager said that he was a very valuable employee. He checked the items one by one and the ghost of alchemy's help repaired those that needed repair. The surprised butler said why they hadn't received reports about it. Surprised by this statement, the steward said that the butler meant it because the duke himself had asked for it. They were ordered that the guy hide his name and field of activity so that rumors about him would not reach the nobility. 
Therefore, they could not keep records of his work. Hearing this, the butler could barely contain his anger in seeing this. The agitated steward said that but if Torriga's return to the Duke family, then why don't they ask him to repair the sword? This was the last straw and the butler broke down and shouted for the manager to shut up. Taking the sword, he said that this sword would be repaired in the best alchemy workshop. And the manager can forget about the existence of Thor Regis and no longer dare to mention his name. The next day, the same thing happened. The butler's shout asking that they would not be able to fix it flew out into the street. The old man in work clothes put the sword on the table and said that he was very sorry. But it was not in their competence. The surprised butler said that this old man dares to laugh at him. This is the largest workshop in the empire. Coughing dryly, the master read the sheet and said that repairing a magic sword was a very difficult task. Then he pointed to one place on the sword, saying whether the butler saw a crack there. More precisely, they were. The cracks are closed now, but the blade is still damaged. If it was an ordinary sword, they could have asked the blacksmith to fix it, but it's a magic sword. Ghost repair requires adding elements of fire and earth to the metal. Whether the butler understands this, he nodded and the old man continued, saying that this is why the alchemy skill is needed for repairs to bring the metal used by the ghost to work in accordance with the original one. Upon hearing this, the surprised butler asked that since the old man knew about it, then why not repair the sword? Then the old man said that there are no alchemists of this level in the empire. The butler's eyes glazed over and he asked what the alchemist meant. And he looked away and said that they existed in the era of heroes. But over time, alchemists began to lose their status and their number decreased, and their skills began to fall. In his youth, he and his comrades often talked about the fact that if they did not continue to develop their craft, then those techniques that have been preserved to this day would be lost for future generations. Suddenly, the old man had a legitimate question because the sword was almost repaired. He asked why not ask him to complete the repairs. The butler was covered in cold sweat running down his face and he didn't say anything. The old man, running his finger over the metal of the sword, said that the work of the master who dealt with this sword was simply beyond praise. There should have been a crack in the middle of the sword, but the old man did not see any traces of it. The cracks are filled in such a way that they cannot be distinguished from the main material. The old man realized what talent the master who repaired this sword had, bent down and begged to be introduced to the person who was repairing this magical sword. He certainly wanted to study with him. Recoiling from such behavior, the butler made a face and thought that he could not introduce this old man to him because he had disappeared in the lands of the demon king. The butler pointed at the sword and shouted in panic for this old man to just fix this sword. It's just a sword. He should just make sure that he looks like new. There is no need for a complete repair. Only the view is important. To this, the master said that this was not possible. If unsuitable materials are used, the strength will decrease. Upon hearing this, the butler slapped his hand on the table and looked at the old man with a gloomy face, saying that it did not matter for a sword that would only be used by the Kingdom of Corridor Ceremonial. Besides, is this old man going to turn down the duke's house? Looking away from the pressure, the old master said what he would do if the butler insisted so much. He will accept this assignment. However, the butler must write in the application that they made a request only for an adjustment of the appearance and not for repairs. The surprised butler asked what kind of request the old man meant, and he kindly smiled and said that this revelation was being made to relieve them of responsibility for the quality of repairs. Seeing this, the butler grimaced and agreed. At this time, in the castle of the Demon King, in one of the rooms of the castle, Mabel Riffrain smiled and held out a spoon with rice, asking Thor to open his mouth. Surprised and confused, the guy asked what Mabel meant, to which she said that thanks to Thor, she can now use magic and the pendant is also brand new. She would like to thank him anyway. Blushing, the guy still decided and opened his mouth and ate a spoonful of rice. While the girl was looking at him excitedly, the guy was eating in embarrassment. Then the guy got serious and asked Mabel how she thought if he could ask the demon king to allocate another room for him. Thinking about it, Mabel said that it was certainly possible, but it would take some time because there were no vacant rooms nearby. Realizing this, the guy nodded regretfully and thought about all this. Most likely, his highness the demon king thought that Thor would make this warehouse his workshop. But there are many valuable things here. In alchemy, it is not uncommon to use fire and chemicals. Therefore, it is possible to accidentally damage important books and materials from another world. Therefore, the guy thought that it would be better for him to have a separate room for a workshop. Smiling, he told Mabel that it would be better if she gave him a tour of the castle, and they should leave the topic of the room for now. The excited girl jumped up from her seat with a twinkle in her eyes and said that they would certainly do it. Bowing, the girl put her hand on her heart and smiled and said that she would not spare her life to fulfill any wish of Thor. The guy, who turned pale from such a formulation, was covered with cold sweat running down his face and said in a panic that they could do without it. 
The cup and plate were placed on a tray and the excited girl said that it was time for her to clean up here after that she would bring tea. Humming a tune to herself, the girl happily left the room. The guy, left alone, looked at the book, thinking about the workshop. Picking up the book, he thought that if only there was an object that could create a workshop anywhere, anytime. When he opened the gurney, he thought that it should be in the catalog storage section. By the way, they say the heroes had a skill that allowed them to store things in another dimension. Whatever it was called, a storage box, a storage skill, or a box of items or something. You could put any number of objects there and get them out at any time. In addition, it was possible to sort items in any convenient way. It's a lost technology from the age of heroes. If he can create a storage box like this, maybe then they can even figure out how the hero's skill works. He should try it. There must be something about it in this book. After a while, the guy finally found it and used it as a compact storage room. The description said that it was compact on the outside and spacious on the inside. You can store anything there. They can also sort items there in the blink of an eye and get them out if they just think about it. The magazine presented the buyer with a compact white rabbit pantry. Reading the descriptions, the guy was surprised to say that this was really it. The same capabilities as the hero skill. It's called a compact storage room. The height is 2 meters, the width is 3 meters, and the depth is 4 meters. It is made of metal and equipped with a large sliding door. The guy reading this wondered that only the appearance is shown here. Flipping through the page, he found himself in a page with explanations. It was written there that the pantry is able to withstand the weight of up to 1,000 rabbits. It will exceed all expectations of the buyer. It is as spacious as another dimension. The surprised guy broke out in a cold sweat and wondered in shock what it didn't mean that another dimension existed. The heroes used a bag or a bag, but to get items directly from another dimension. Is this the white rabbit store a next generation item? Rabbits. The guy was thinking that we are talking about horned rabbits. They are the first ones who were subdued by the heroes when they came into this world. It's amazing that this item could withstand 1,000 horned rabbits. He may not be able to create something so powerful, but he will try anyway. The guy activated his higher alchemy skill, introducing this room and its conditions, and a new notification appeared in front of the guy with a description of what was needed. The window said that creation was currently impossible due to a lack of magical power. At the bottom, the magical powers that are needed to create this were given. The earth element was enough, the wind element was also enough, but the darkness element was not enough. The guy's hand trembled and clutching his head. He thought that he lacked dark energy, but creation is possible. After releasing dark energy, the guy thought that the amount of this energy that he can use is still small, because until recently he lived in an empire where there is practically no dark energy and light prevails. Folding his arms under his chest, the guy said that this was a problem. At this time, the sound of someone's heels was heard, and with it the pressure of dark energy. The guy at this time wondered where he could find the owner of sufficient power of darkness. Suddenly, a new notification popped up in front of the guy, saying that the takeover was completed and now the creation of the item was possible. The surprised guy asked what had happened at all and then a voice was heard asking for his forgiveness. When the guy recognized the voice, he was covered in cold sweat running down his face. He slowly turned around and saw the demon king there who asked if he was in the way. Upon seeing the demon king, the guy bowed in greeting to his highness. The demon king, seeing this, said that there was no need to bow. He did not come on an official visit. When he got back up, the guy thought that he had felt it even during the audience. The demon king always carries himself with dignity, and his mask and rum are magic items. The alchemist's instinct told the guy that these were very strong artifacts. Finally, the demon king spoke up and said that first he wanted to express his gratitude to the guy for the fact that Mabel could now use magic. Coughing dryly, the demon king continued, saying that he had known Mabel since she was very young, and she was very dear to him. He is grateful that Thor was able to save the girl from her worries. Surprised by this, the guy's eyes brightened, and he bowed his head and said that it was not worth thanking his highness. Putting his hand on his heart, the guy smiled and said that Mabel was always there for him and helped him, so if with the help of alchemy he managed to create something that is useful for her, he is already happy. Upon hearing this, the demon king froze for a second, and then said that the guy was strange after all. Surprised by this, the guy asked if this was the case and the demon king nodded, saying that all the past envoys of the empire were so scared that they could not even speak. In addition, they immediately ran back, but Thor is completely calm. Thinking about it, the demon king said that he was wondering if the guy was up to something suspicious. The guy grinned and asked what the demon king had noticed. Surprised by this admission, the demon king recoiled and asked that he was right, but the guy holding out the book showed a place with a rabbit pantry and said that in fact he was thinking of creating it. Smiling broadly, the guy with a twinkle in his eyes, read the description given in the book that thanks to this pantry, you can sort everything in the blink of an eye. A storeroom that won't break even under the weight of a thousand rabbits. Is it possible for him to do something like that? He needs more space to work. 
Upon hearing this, the Demon King awkwardly said that the guy was really very strange, and then he asked if he could ask something. The guy smiled happily and said that of course his highness could ask the bespectacled man anything. Then the Demon King said that the guy said he intended to create an item that would surpass the technology of the hero world. Is it true? The guy nodded with a smile and said that it was exactly like that. The Demon King did not believe him and asked the guy if he was sane. But the heroes came from a world that was much superior to them in progress. The guy smiled and pointed to the catalog and said that they were lucky to have this trolley of items from the world of heroes. The guy explained that there are many magical items shown here, including a foot bath that he made earlier. The Demon King nodded, saying that this is how he wants to achieve this, and the guy nodded, said that the heroes greatly surpassed them in knowledge, but that's why he wants to continue creating objects from their world. With these words, the guy clenched his fist and said that even then they might be able to comprehend all the technologies. No, it would definitely happen. He would improve his alchemy skills and then open his own workshop, visit the alchemy shop sign there. An admiring guy with a twinkle in his eyes went into a rage and said that he would collect all kinds of materials there to create amazing things. He wants the items he created to be able to be used everywhere in the lands of demons. Then he will be able to hear their opinion and improve alchemy even more. The demon king stopped the guy's chatter and from that the guy realized that he seemed to have gone too far. Flinching his fist, he was covered in cold sweat running down his body and thought that he had forgotten himself and said too much. As soon as alchemy was mentioned, he was immediately blown off the brakes. Suddenly, the demon king laughed at the top of his voice and said that it was great, he liked it. It was the first time the Demon King had heard of an envoy from the Empire working for the benefit of demons. The guy is very interesting. With these words, the Demon King said that he was giving his permission. The surprised guy asked about that. Is this true? And the Demon King pointed at himself and said that otherwise he would not be the Demon King. Looking at Thor's passion and zeal, he can only accept his aspiration. Tears welled up in the guy's eyes. Then the Demon King said that the guy said he wanted to create a compact storage room, so he lets the guy do it. The guy happily asked if he was allowed to use it. The demon king also gave his permission and the guy smiled broadly and thanked the demon king. The guy took out something and said that he had prepared some materials here. Seeing this, the demon king asked in a panic that the guy was going to do it right now. The surprised guy said that the demon king himself had allowed him. The demon king panicked and said that of course he had allowed it, but he did not know that it would be so soon. And after a while, the guy looked at the materials and thought that he had prepared the materials for this subject in advance. He softened and crushed several metal shields into lumps. The storm will be made of this metal. Looking at the gurney, the guy smiled and thought about the fact that the catalog names dimensions of 2 meters in height, 3 meters in width and 4 in depth, but there is no need for such a large pantry. The element of darkness required for creation has accumulated enough, so he can proceed. While Mabel was busy with a tray containing tea with a cup and sugar, the demon king called her. The girl approached the demon king and then he asked her that the guy was really going to create an item right now. The girl nodded with a smile and said that he was like that. If he caught fire, he would not stop. The demon king nodded, saying that's how it was. Then, turning towards the guy, the demon king said that he couldn't understand what was going on in this alchemist's head at all. Mabel, hearing this, smiled and said that Thor is the one who is able to understand them. The demon king tilted his head and seeing this, the girl explained, saying that the guy recently, when she showed him the room, said that he wanted to create clothes for lizards that would not cling to scales. Surprised by this, the demon king asked if the man wanted to do something for the lizards. The girl nodded, looked at Thor's back, who had already plunged into magical power, and said that she thought Thor was able to see the essence of things, free from prejudice. He's probably thinking about the difficulties faced by the inhabitants of the demon lands and what might really be useful to them. Putting her hand on her chest, the elf looked at the demon king and told his highness to believe in Thor. Surprised by this, the demon king was speechless. At this time, the guy concentrated on creating that very item. He was intensely imagining what he needed. The size was too big, so he decided to make all sides 1.2 meters. The body of the storeroom is made of harvested iron ingots. The element of darkness is poured inside to create a storage space, and with the help of the element of wind, it fills that space with air. The materials were ready, and therefore the creation began. The texture, the hole, the color, the hardness, he presented all this well, and then the skill higher alchemy was activated and a compact storage room was created. After merging everything on earth, a compact storage room appeared in front of the guy, similar to the one in the catalog. The guy immediately looked at its characteristics and saw that it was called a compact storage room in the style of another world. The attributes were earth, wind, and darkness. The rarity of the item was estimated at five full and one incomplete star. Then there were explanations about what each element did. A ghost using the element of darkness is created inside the storm subspace. A ghost of the wind elements help. The subspace is filled with air, 
and the ghost of the earth elements help, the subspace is fixed and closed. Then there was a description of the subject. The compact storage room creates a separate space for storing items. Food products placed inside the subspace do not deteriorate, and items are sorted automatically. The explanation went on to explain that when the ghost found an object in the territory of demons, magic stones were not required to recharge because the element of darkness is absorbed automatically. The durability of the item was at the level of impossible to destroy with a low-level spell, and no magic is able to affect the items inside. The service life of the item was provided for 100 years. Looking at this pantry, the guy was not very happy because it clearly did not reach the subject from the world of heroes. The storage room from the catalog is much more voluminous and roomy, has both a keyhole and a drain for rainwater. He couldn't think of the subject well enough. With a self-deprecating smile, the guy said that he was really far from their level. But mistakes are also important because he sought to surpass the world of heroes. The guy reported that the creation was completed. Mabel said with a twinkle in his eyes that Thor was doing well. And the Demon King said in disbelief that he couldn't believe it. Thor just took and created an item right there. Going to the box, the Demon King said that but wasn't there enough metal in it to store materials. The guy smiled and said that everything was thought out. Has his highness ever heard of the bag of items that the heroes used? The Demon King nodded and said that according to rumors, this item had an infinite volume. Stroking the surface of the pantry, the guy said that this little thing has a similar principle. However, it was the first time he created something like this, so it turned out a little worse than he would have liked. The surprised Demon King turned pale and asked the guy that in the Empire, Alchemists who can create a subspace are commonplace. The guy broke into a cold sweat after thinking about it and regretfully said that he was not sure about this. And he thought to himself that there was little element of darkness in the Empire, so there probably weren't any such people. He wouldn't have been able to create this ghost item with just his magic power either. The guy said that they would leave this conversation about the Empire. To begin with, is it possible for him to check the space for objects? The Demon King nodded and said he didn't mind. Nodding, the guy smiled and said that then they were going. And there was a cheerful elf next to him, who said, His Highness, that they would return soon. The pantry door creaked open. When Thor and Mabel found themselves inside the pantry, they saw an empty white space. The surprised guy said how spacious it was. And the surprised girl asked how it could be so spacious inside such a small box. But these words, the girl strode forward, and then started running, shouting to Thor that it was amazing, because even if you run, the edge is still not getting closer. There is nothing like this even in the castle's treasury. The guy explained this by saying that because it is a copy of an item from the world of heroes, yes, their technology is really amazing. With admiration and brilliance, the girl looked around saying that the technology of the world of heroes is really amazing. The girl soon turned around and told Thor that he had decided to learn their technique so that he could surpass them someday. Smiling, the guy said that well, this is still far away because the storage box had unlimited capacity, but its compact storage room has a capacity limit, in other words, the space is not unlimited. His technique is still far inferior to the world of heroes. And yet, the guy smiled and told Mabel that by improving this technology, he might be able to create a bag or backpack with storage space later. And if it works out, won't the girl do him a favor by testing this item in action? At first, the girl did not get it. And then flashing red, she said that she had to check. Then she stuttered and said that she was just a maid. She can't accept such a legendary item. The guy pointed at himself and said to Mabel that she always helps him. He appreciates her very much. That's why he wants her to be the first to use his invention. At this time, a voice was heard asking them what was going on here and if Mabel was okay. The girl is completely blushing at first, playing with her fingers thinking about the guy's embarrassing words that he appreciates her. Clutching her burning face, the girl looked away in embarrassment and said that Thor never ceases to surprise her, but she is still insanely happy about it. Suddenly there was a shout asking them why they weren't answering and if everything was okay. The surprised guy and the girl said they were fine and apologized for not responding. When the Demon King heard them, he said that he was glad that nothing had happened to them, and then asked if he could go into the storeroom. The surprised guy asked that his highness also check the work of the item. Nodding, the Demon King said that it was natural. The Kingdom of Corindor is the ruler. He would like to make sure that this item is safe. Upon hearing this, the guy said that then he asks him to pass. Upon entering, the Demon King looked sideways in surprise and said that he did not think that it would be so spacious here. He is really amazed. The guy said that his highness's praise was an honor for him. Looking around, the demon king said that it was quite bright here, and its area was about the same as the sports ground of the demon lands. At this time, a voice rang in the guy's head telling him that a rare SS rank item had been discovered, so automatic saving was underway. The guy who didn't understand what it was looked back, but the demon king looked back with admiration. 
The cape and mask of the Demon King spun in the air and a voice rang in the guy's head telling him that the Cloak of Concealment increases protection from all elements. The mask hidden increases damage by all elements. These two things fell in front of the guy and the guy, not understanding what was happening, looked at them. And when he raised his head, what he saw struck him to the depths of his soul and he asked with shock what was going on here at all. In front of the guy stood a pretty beauty with black horns and in beautiful clothes and with blonde hair. Looking at this, the guy realized that it looked like the true form of the Demon King. The Demon King himself trembled, blushed all over and screamed asking how to understand this, folding her arms under her chest. The Demon King nodded and said that in general she understood the situation, so Thor is forgiven. The Demon King became a girl with blonde hair and a blue uniform. Thor was sitting on the ground in front of her, humbly bowing his head. He was thinking that the fact that the mask and robe of the Demon King were removed was his fault. Sweating with nerves, he thought that he had completely forgotten that this item automatically collects items. The storm automatically detected and collected rare items, which is why when the Demon King Rukia went inside, her mask and robe were automatically collected. There was a big commotion after that. Rukia was sitting with her face covered with both hands and Mabel was running around her in a panic. And Thor himself continued to apologize along the way trying to explain what happened until they both calmed down. As a result, the Demon King Rukia generously decided to forgive Thor, saying that she understands that the guy did not do it on purpose, so she forgives. Mabel and Chancellor Kelv, as well as Rukia's personal maids and her family, were informed about Rukia's true appearance. No one else knew the truth. Folding her hands, Rukia said with condemnation that, of course, who knew, did Thor really think that the Demon King could rule the country with such and such an appearance? Therefore, on the advice of the Chancellor, the Demon King donned a more appropriate appearance using magical items. Mabel, looking at the Demon King with concern, said that Lady Rukia was worthy of being the Demon King and her height, perhaps she would grow up. Sighing, Rukia said that there was no need to comfort her, she wanted to hear the opinion of someone who came here from the outside. After looking at Thor Regis, the girl pointed at herself and asked him what he thought about the true appearance of the Demon King Rukia Evergar. The ghost of these words was a little girl, but she was worried. After looking at her, the guy was in thought, and seeing this, Mabel called Mrs. Rukia. The guy finally decided, said that it was as if he was seeing a divine image. This of course surprised the demon king. And the guy continued, saying with feeling that at the sight of her majesty the demon lord, the guy changed his mind about a lot of things. He always thought that magical things were the most beautiful thing that could be, but it seems he was mistaken and now he realized it when he saw her majesty. In front of the natural beauty of the Demon King, the beauty of his creations is nothing compared to it. He is ashamed that he cannot approach this level with his skills. From such a speech, the Demon King blushed in panic and screamed that she did not understand what Thor was talking about. Despite this, the guy said that he was just saying what he thought. The Demon Lord clenched her fists and screamed that the guy was talking too much and with tears coming out of her eyes. She slapped her chest and said that she spoke so well of her. But is it possible for a man who wears a mask and pretends to be someone he is not? Hearing this, the guy turned pale and with cold sweat running down his face, the guy fell down and said that he also did not tell much about himself. The girl asked what the guy meant. And he put his hand on his chest and humbly admitted that he was actually not a guest and not an envoy of the Empire. The Empire exiled him here as a hostage and this became a condition for saving his life. Upon hearing this, both Mabel and Rukia were confused and looked at the guy with concern. He bowed his head regretfully and said that in the eyes of his father, he was a disgrace and a hindrance to the entire ducal family. Therefore, he told him to leave and die, thereby not to stain the name of the family with his existence. In Dulgaria, the main thing is strength. If you are not a fighter and do not possess the magic of destruction, then you are useless. The art of alchemy is child's play for the Imperials and is not respected everywhere. It is treated in exactly the opposite way. At these words, the guy remembered all that he had gone through to be here. The surprised demon lord asked how this could be. The guy chuckled and said that, however, he believes that he is lucky that he got into the possession of the demon king. Here he can finally work as an alchemist with his shoulders squared. Smiling, the guy said that he was able to experience the happiness of creating objects and can create what he likes. Although he was talking happily. Mabel interrupted him, telling him to wait. Getting up from her seat, she said that the rumors that the guy was sent to the lands of the Mad Demon King as a hostage and alive were true. The guy smiled sadly and said that it was true. The girl, hearing this, became sad and went up to him with trembling hands took his hands and sat down next to him and said that even she could not understand. And as soon as he had the courage to admit it, it would be better to make everyone think that he was an envoy from the Empire. He could use the name of the Empire to dictate his terms here as an Imperial. The guy winked and said it was nonsense, they could keep it a secret. The girl smiled awkwardly and nodded. And the guy with a serious face said that if it became known that he was a victim sent to the lands of the Demon King, 
They would treat him differently here, wouldn't they? The relationship with the Empire may deteriorate, so it's better if they keep it a secret. In exchange, the guy promised that he would not tell anyone about the secret of the demon lore. Mabel covered her mouth in surprise, and the demon king clenched her teeth. Looking ahead, the guy thought that he thinks they both understand everything. He's keeping her majesty's secret, so that's why she has to keep his secret. Under such equal conditions, they will be able to believe him. This sweet girl is not confident in herself and therefore hides her true identity behind a mask and a robe, just like Thor himself was when he listened in the Empire. It seemed to him that they were similar. Upon hearing this, the demon lord giggled a couple of times at first, but then he couldn't help clutching his stomach and laughed loudly, pointing at the guy and saying that Thor Regas is so stupid. He had foolishly revealed his secret. This is how he reveals her secret and demands mutual silence. What the hell is he doing? The guy was embarrassed and said that the demon lord seemed to like to laugh as he saw it. The girl called him an idiot, and then said that it was bad that the guy found out her secret, but she was glad that she would have dirt on Thor, and since he offered it himself, she had no choice but to believe him. The guy raised his head and asked that she believe him, and she grinned and asked that she shouldn't. Then, approaching Thor, the girl poked him in the forehead with her finger and said that she believed him, and he believed her, and they exchanged secrets. If she makes a mistake about a guy, then she's not worthy of being a demon lord. The guy smiled good-naturedly and said that he thought her majesty was a wonderful ruler. Before he started, the embarrassed demon lord turned away and told him to stop, because you can't say that. Smiling, the demon king announced that the guy was an honored guest from the empire and her personal alchemist. She would like everyone in the castle to make sure that the guy is treated gently. Mabel, who was inspired by the words of the mistress, said that she would do as the mistress ordered. Thor was glad of such attention from her majesty. Turning, the demon king walked forward, and then stopped and said that she would repeat herself, but her and his identity were their shared secret, only they should know about it. The guy smiled gently and said that of course it was true, thinking to himself that in this compact pantry they were able to reveal to each other who they were. It's like his personal refuge from the outside world and a great place to relax. At this time, Mabel clapped her hands joyfully and said that it was good. When the demon king and Thor looked at her, she said why don't they have a tea party? Here they can talk about everything without fear of being heard? No. If so, they could use this place in the future. Thinking about it, the demon king smiled mischievously and said that it definitely sounds fun. Doesn't the guy think so too? The excited guy nodded too. Smiling, the guy excitedly said that he would be dumb as a fish and he wanted to thank these two for their kindness. The angry demon lord screamed that there was nothing to talk about, she just wanted to have fun. Mabel also shouted with the expectation that her majesty was speaking correctly. She also just wanted them both to relax here over delicious tea. The panicked guy said that of course he understood they could use this place for a tea party. Mabel excitedly thanked the guy and Rukia joined her. Putting their hands together, they smiled and had fun. The tea party here is part of a story that no one has told yet, but which has already begun to have a profound effect on the demon lord and has subsequently been called the greatest tea party in the castle of the demon king. The next day, in the throne room, the demon king sat on his throne as usual. The chancellor bowed in front of him and said that he was listening to his highness. The demon king, leaning his head on his hand, apologized for calling the chancellor for such a late visit, and then said that there was something urgent that he wanted to tell him. The interested servant knelt down on one knee and asked what it was about Thor, to which the demon king said that it was so. He watched the guy create the item, although he doesn't know much about it. The Chancellor excitedly asked about what kind of object it was and the Demon King told him that it was better for him to listen and not talk. Upon hearing this, the Chancellor smiled and asked for forgiveness, because he, the Chancellor of the Demon Lord, should not express excitement at the slightest occasion. So Thor made another wonderful healing item, but who did he help this time? Unfortunately, the Chancellor of the Demon King said that this was not the case. Oh, it's not a subject for wellness. Then the Chancellor asked if this could be a taming for Mabel. After denying this, the Demon King said that this was a space for storing items. Surprised, the Chancellor said that the Demon King said that the heroes had once used as a thing to store items with a huge amount of space inside. So Thor was able to do it. And then the Chancellor realized the meaning of his own words and jumped up in surprise and screamed asking what Thor had managed to do. Looking at the Chancellor, the Demon King told him not to scream, but he couldn't calm down so easily. It was amazing. Slapping his forehead. The demon lord said that it seemed to him that the chancellor was getting more and more worried. The chancellor was excited anyway, because only heroes used to own such a thing. Then the demon king asked what he also knew about their storage bags. Sweating from such shocking news, the guy said that this is a skill that allows you to store items in another space. This is also one of the reasons why the heroes were so strong. They could take items out of small bags. It was a terrible threat to the demons of those years. They saw a man with a small bag and attacked him as an easy target, and a moment later he pulled out a huge sword. 
The heroes have only one bag, a proverb that can often be heard in the lands of the demon lord. After telling about this, the chancellor excitedly continued saying that initially only the heroes of another world possessed this ability. The demon king nodded and said that he knew and if every person had it then they would have been destroyed. Trembling, the chancellor was covered with cold sweat running down his face and said that this storage box was invented by Thor. Clenching his fist, the chancellor said that this was very serious. They should prevent Thor from monopolizing such an item. The demon king looked at his faithful servant and said that everything would be fine. The surprised chancellor asked what his highness meant and the demon king explained that Thor had told him that he would make another one for the demon king and Mabel. Upon hearing this, the chancellor fell from shock, feeling weak in his body. The man could hardly stand up slightly and asked in a trembling voice what he would do. Unable to restrain himself, Kelv banged his head on the column, imprinting his head there, saying that the storage box, with this, the concept of rare things in the world would be violated. Seeing this, the demon king told the chancellor to be calm. Kelv, who felt unimportant, apologized for it and said that he was confused by all this. Seeing this, the demon lord said that it was not worth shocking the chancellor. Then, looking at him, the demon king said that Thor had asked him to say something to the chancellor. He listened and the demon lord touched the mask and taking it off, said that Thor said he wanted to be useful. Rukia put her hand on her chin and smiled and said that as the personal alchemist of the demon lord, he promised that life would be on their side, so she would like to try to create all favorable conditions for him. The surprised chancellor raised his head and asked that the demon lord really trusted him so much. Rukia nodded after putting the mac back on. And then the Chancellor looked at her with a glassy look and said that he thought Thor was trustworthy, but he just gave them a foot bath. Smiling, the Demon Lord nodded, saying that he was like that, he had no equal in this. Leaning back on the throne, the Demon King clasped his fingers and told the Chancellor to make sure that Thor did not need anything and did not get into trouble. Bending down, the Chancellor said that he would do as his highness ordered. Then, seeing the servant's face, the Demon King asked if something was bothering the Chancellor. Raising his head, Calf said that something else had happened today. Hadn't it? His Highness is in an unusually good mood. Smiling, the Demon Lord said that everything was fine, he just had a pleasant conversation. Kelv, looking at Mr. or Mrs., asked with concern that nothing else had happened for sure. The Demon King said that they had talked and learned a lot about each other's position. That's all. At this time, inside the pantry, Mabel giggled sweetly with a smile. Seeing this, the guy sitting opposite her in front of the table asked if something had happened. Then Mabel smiled and said that she was thinking about what had happened and it was so exciting. After hearing this, the guy said that it was clear to him now. Mabel closed her eyes and remembered her mistress and said that she had been raised as a successor since childhood. The predecessor of the current demon lord was very strong and strict. He could fight a dozen opponents at once, so Rukia wanted to be his equal. Smiling, the guy remembered his house and said about it. His dad had to train him so that he would try to get combat skills. He was ruthless, and then the guy thought that his father could kill him with this wooden sword. This was one of the reasons why he left home. Raising his head, the guy asked that the demon lord was very strong and the excited Mabel said that of course it was so. No human could defeat her in a magical duel. Upon hearing this, the guy asked with interest, then whether it made sense for her to hide her face. After looking at the guy, Mabel said that some people judge by appearance. Seeing a young girl, they would consider the demon king weak. The guy smiled and said that there should be a lot of such people. Thinking about it, Mabel said that but there are also many strong comrades in the castle of the demon king. For example... This is Mr. Racing, the Flame General. The Racing clan is known as the martial arts sect in the Demon Castle, feeding on the blood of the Fire Giant. He is slightly less than 2 meters tall, has a muscular build, and his hair is red like a flame. When he is angry, he emits fire. The interested guy thought that he would like to take a look at such a guy once. Then he said that in the old days, the Demon King entrusted the Flaming Giant with the hair of the Flaming Mountain. It was like that during the war with the heroes. Then the seven-day great battle ended. Rising is a descendant of the fire giant who defended the castle, which is why his strength is respected. Hearing this, the guy turned pale and said that it was better not to approach him. Laughing, Mabel said that times had changed. He was actually very kind, so everything should be fine. With these words, the girl smiled a little sadly and the guy noticed it. Suddenly, the girl was abruptly inspired by remembering something and said that they were going to take a walk around the castle. They should arrange it tomorrow. The guy smiled and said that he liked the idea. Then the guy said that Mabel was so good. Feeling awkward, Mabel said it was nothing. Night fell and the moon rose into the sky. After asking around, the guy thanked the girl for everything. The girl looked somewhere and then turned to Thor, who asked what she wanted and the demon lord smiled, raised her finger and told the guy to address her without unnecessary formalities. The guy looked at the girl with concern and said that but he was so obliged to her, to which she put her index finger on his lips and said that he did not need badges of respect. This confused the guy and he nodded. 
Then the girl said that she was just a servant who was assigned to take care of their guest with the status of a guy. He was much more important than her. Smiling, the girl clapped her hands and asked the guy to address her simply by her first name. The guy nodded with a smile, saying that then he would promise Mabel. Suddenly, the elf bowed and took the guy's hand. Smiling, she asked him to stay there forever. Blushing deeply, the girl said that it was because she wanted to stay with him forever. The surprised guy was also covered with scarlet spots and looked at the girl, but she instantly wished the guy good night and ran away. Despite the fleeing girl, the guy touched his heart and heard his heart beating crazily. The shocked guy was thinking that what a day he had. He still can't get over it. After that, the guy smiled and looked at the window in his room, thinking that it had been several days since his arrival and everything went well. The guy found a book from another world, made magic items. He is happy that he has come to the land of the demon lord. Perhaps he will be able to fulfill his desire to live a long life here. Raising his head and looking at the moon, the guy thought that he was not going to return to the empire. He will make this place a real paradise for the alchemist and will try his best for the sake of the demon king and Mabel, for everyone who accepted it. While Thor was visiting the territory of the Demon King, not everything went smoothly in the Empire of Dolgaria. In the Imperial Hall, the Blame Clan was enjoying a party. The nobles greeted each other, and the young men approached the ladies. At that time, someone noticed that Duke Regas had come inside. Duke Regas had a gloomy face and was dressed in his usual uniform, with his butler and the captain of his knights walking beside him. It was someone who informed the people of the Duke's arrival. Someone else said, as expected, the Duke looks amazing. Looking at him, a lady in a white hat with wrappers covered her face with a beautiful fan and said that but she was sure that the duke was not having an easy time now. The duke's gloomy look did not change from what he heard. Upon hearing this woman, someone else excitedly remembered the duke's child and said that the duke was doing everything for the prosperity of the empire. But his son, another man with a light mustache smiled and said that yes. He had heard that the duke had given his son as a prisoner to the possession of the mad demon king. Someone else smiled and said that this was such devotion as expected from the duke. The other nobles immediately caught themselves and one of them excitedly said that this was what he was talking about. The honor of their empire, aristocrats like Duke Regis. After these words, everyone started fussing in agreement. And so, surrounded by these claps, three figures were in the center, and among these three figures, the duke bowed his head and smiled madly, thinking that this was the praise that he, the duke, deserved. Sighing. The duke smiled and said that it's not easy to be the center of attention, is it? Now that the shameful offspring has disappeared, the ducal fame will grow. After these words, the butler was covered with cold sweat running down his face, remembered the magic sword that no alchemist could repair and turned doubtfully to the duke, saying that if we talk only about glory, then the duke's son, hearing him, the duke, enraged with swollen veins, turned away and said what the butler meant. Pointing at the servant, he shouted that he should not dare to mention the one who went to the land of the demon king and died there serving the empire. That's all. The startled butler nodded in panic. Seeing this tremor, the duke clicked his tongue and said that the butler was spoiling his fun, so he should go and get him something to drink. The panicked butler immediately turned around and went to get the order. At this time, there were oohs and ahs from the crowd and someone said that her majesty had arrived. The blonde man, looking at the princess, put his hand on her chin like a true appraiser and said that these eyes are the color of blue sky, she is beautiful. The man's friend smiled and supported his friend, saying that the princess was here, the bearer of the sacred sword of heroes and a member of the house of dynasty. In front of everyone's eyes was a beautiful girl with long silky hair, the tips of which were curling like curls. She was wearing a gorgeous scarlet dress, and she carried herself with the dignity of a true princess. As soon as she entered the hall, the speaker announced that her imperial highness Princess Liana, the third princess of the empire, had nailed. The lady in the hat smiled sweetly and said that she was not only strong but also beautiful. One of the nobles from the crowd supported this, saying that the light magic that the princess possesses is so powerful that it is akin to divine. The duke, looking up at the princess, because she was on the stairs, smiled and said that the princess herself honored them with her presence. Raising his head, the duke smiled from ear to ear and said that the princess was beautiful as always. Looking at him with a cold gaze, the princess said that there were people who did not deserve to be here. They have to get rid of him. The duke, hearing this, opened his mouth wide in surprise and was covered with cold sweat running down his face. When the soldiers had already come up to execute the order, the duke finally came to his senses and asked how and why, why he was being treated like this. The soldier, not letting the duke go ahead, said that he had to leave the hall, to which he was stunned and asked why he was not being listened to, he was the duke. The other knight also pointed in the other direction without listening, asking him to come out. Pushing aside the guards, the duke shouted to be let in at last, putting his hand on his heart. He panicked and asked her majesty why she was sending him away, if he had done something. 
looking at him as if he were a pathetic piece of trash. The princess said that the duke had put her and her servants at risk, and after that he still dared to express indignation. The surprised man asked what kind of risk he had put her at, to which she replied that she had instructed the duke to restore the magic sword. Whether he remember, turning pale and covered with cold sweat running down his face, the duke nodded, thinking that he seemed to remember that he had received such a request. The princess continued by saying that she was informed that the restoration was complete and she received a magic sword. But when she used it, the sword could not withstand her magic, and the blade shattered. The surprised duke's eyes went blank and asked in panic how such a thing could happen. But the princess, without even listening to him, told him not to even dare to speak to her. Magic escaped from the blade and she almost lost her life, and she owes her salvation to the comrades who covered her. Upon hearing this, the duke lost all strength in his legs and almost fell, and the people listening to the princess's speech abruptly quieted down. Then the princess continued saying that later she found out that the magic sword shattered into pieces because a piece of metal was simply melted into the place of the chip during repair. This part of the sword interrupted the flow of magic and as a result, the blade could not stand. Sweating profusely, the duke's heart began to race and he turned pale. Then the princess asked if, after what she had heard, the duke still wanted to stay here. He should know how hard it is to restore a magic item. Why didn't they just admit that they couldn't do it? Doesn't he realize how dangerous a broken weapon is in battle for its owner? Such an honor obtained by deceiving people, and indeed great glory awaits the duke. No matter what the princess said, the duke did not give up so easily. Taking strength in his hands, he thought that this could not be and shouted that it was obvious that the restorer had done a lousy job, he must have thought that he could hide it, it was he who should be punished. The princess, who had already turned her back, turned back and, seeing the duke's smirk, frowned and told the servant to bring what she asked for. Then she explained to the duke that she had checked it out, in the workshop responsible for the restoration. He was given these documents by a messenger. Just at this time, the servant brought the document, taking the parchment and opening it. The girl showed it to the duke and read what was written there. And it was written there that since it was difficult to completely restore the magic sword, Duke Regas instructed the workshop to return it only to its former appearance. It also said that Duke Regas takes full responsibility for this. All this was certified by the ducal seal and the signature of the ducal chamberlain. Seeing this, the duke was shocked at the end and gaped wide, and the people of the nobles looked at the parchment with shock on their faces. Folding the parchment back, the princess said that the master in the workshop added that the magic sword had been half repaired, and only a small defect remained, which apparently caused it to split. At this time, in front of the girl, the maids brought a sword split into fragments. Taking it by the hilt, the princess said that it was amazing, because the part of the sword that remained intact was the part that was half repaired. This is the only part that withstood her light magic and only thanks to this she still managed to successfully catch the Hexenbus. Stuttering, the duke said that he did not think that the lady planned to use it in battle, so. From such words, the coldness in the girl's eyes intensified and looking at the duke. She said that recently the magic of light had increased so much that after the ceremony she was assigned to defeat the Hexenbus, she was sure that the duke's family had already been informed about it. The duke, more and more driven into coal, did not know what to answer, and seeing this, the princess said that she owed her life to the one who perfectly restored the surviving part of the sword. Therefore, she would like to hire him. So the princess asked the duke if he would be so kind as to tell her the name of the person who did this and where she could find him. The duke turned pale with panicked eyes and said that it seemed that a wandering master was working on the sword. He was not related to him and did not know where he was now. Upon hearing this, the princess sighed and said that in that case she would not wish to see him again. That's how the duke found himself outside the door of the banquet hall with his shoulders down and his reputation down. This made him pale and covered with cold sweat running down his face in streams. And then the butler appeared and, in a panic at this sight, the duke called him. From anger, all the veins stood out on the duke's face, and his eyes turned red, becoming enraged. He turned and shouted asking the butler what he had done. How dare he leave such clear evidence against him? Because of this old man, he was thrown into disgrace. Turning pale and sweating, the butler said that he simply had no way to do otherwise. The duke, not listening to his excuse, shouted at him to shut up and said that he did not want to see the butler. Therefore, he deprives him of his job. Let him go on vacation, and soon he will get rid of him altogether. Hearing such a threat, the butler trembled all over with fear and cold sweat began to flow down his face like some kind of river. While the butler fell down, the duke walked towards the carriage. The captain of the knights supported his former colleague, but the duke did not care. The duke's honor had fallen, but there was a way to fix it all. The duke ordered the carriage to move thinking that he would show that Duke Regas was of great benefit to the empire. He had a great plan that would benefit the empire. Smiling maliciously, the duke rubbed his chin, thinking that if they could properly use these stupid demons and inhumans, he would be able to regain his glory. No, he will even be able to reach even greater heights than before. At this time, in the lands of the demon lord, 
Thor smiled and told Mabel to show him the castle. She smiled and winked at the guy and said that he could count on him. Looking at the excited Mabel, the guy noticed a new hairstyle on her and also noticed that she seemed to like it. Although Mabel started showing places around the castle, at first she said that Thor's room was on the third floor of the West Wing. The servants' quarters are on the second floor, in the same West Wing. So if a guy needs someone or something, he can just call them. After that, the kitchen was the first in line, where they went in joyfully and saw the elf chef who was cooking some kind of soup and his subordinates were moving quickly following his orders. Then there was a room of maids who cheerfully greeted the guy for one thing. There the guy noticed a couple of interesting things, one of which was a vase. With a mischievous smile, the guy began to examine him, and Mabel, looking at such fervor of the guy, did nothing but smile. That's how the castle was inspected. Mabel and Thor had fun watching everything. And so, some time later, they reached the main hall, which was huge. There were two minotaurs on guard, but otherwise the hall was empty. Mabel explained that this hall connects all parts of the castle. And then seeing that the guy froze looking around, she told him to keep up with her. The guy nodded, followed her and soon his gaze fell on the statue in the hall surrounded by rays of light. He approached it with interest and saw that it was a statue of a female demon in full uniform and with a formidable sword. Looking at this statue, the guy asked Mabel whose statue it was, to which she said that it was a statue of the first king. The delighted guy thought that the first king was a woman and asked about the sword that the statue was holding. Mabel then said that the first demon king was holding a sword made of a stone that had fallen from the sky. It was said that she used it to fight against heroes from another world. This is a very rare demonic sword. Leaning over to Mabel, he asked about that, but it was just a remark, wasn't it? The surprised maid turned around and said that, as expected from Thor, he noticed at first glance. The guy smiled and said that he knows because he doesn't feel any magic from the sword. Of course, it was due to his alchemist abilities. Looking at the statue, Mabel nodded and said that the sword was broken in a battle with a brave warrior from another world and she does not know where he is now. The guy bowed his head and said that he was very sorry. The elf smiled and said that it was a treasure of the demon tribe. She would like to show it to the guy. The guy smiled and said that if he were in the castle, he would try to restore it. The girl, hearing this, looked at him in surprise, and the guy, surprised by this look, squinted at her in response. The girl, confused in a panic, said that this was the sword of the first demon king and it was not only about restoring it, but if the guy could. Thor smiled and said that well, they can't do anything if she's missing, can they? Mabel nodded and said she was sure the sword was somewhere in the outside world. The demon king would be glad to find him. The guy introducing Rukia with a sword in his hand said that of course she would probably be happy. Stroking his chin, the guy thought about what he would look for when he had the opportunity. No, he would rather forge a sword for her that would surpass the sword of the first demon lord. Boston thought, the guy said out loud that, for example, it would be a blade that could lengthen or make the magic of darkness fly out of the sword. Upon hearing the guy, Mabel happily asked that the guy wanted to make a demonic sword for her majesty. The guy looked at her with a smile and said that it was so. He thought that his highness would be pleased if he had his own demonic sword. The girl enthusiastically grabbed the guy's hands and said that it was a wonderful idea. If there's anything she can do. At that moment she came up close to the guy and said in his ear to let her know. The guy blushed all over and looked back and saw two minotaurs who were whispering among themselves. One of them said that Mabel was always with Master Thor. The other nodded and said she was so happy. The girl herself, apparently also embarrassed, turned around and grabbed the guy by the hand, smiling and said that she would then continue the tour. The guy also smiled and said that he was waiting for this. At this time, a loud voice suddenly rang out from behind them and when they turned around, they saw a majestic man under two meters tall and with fiery red hair. Looking at this giant, the guy froze in amazement. And the giant said that the man was very weak in appearance. Surprised, the guy immediately thought that this giant was huge, taller than two meters in appearance. Red hair fluttering like a flame is this the one? The shocked guy asked that it was Mr. Rising's flame general. The man with the goatee grinned and asked that the guy knew his name. Raising his hand and releasing the pressure, the general smiled and said that he was indeed the general of the Raising flame. He is one of the generals of the Dark Lord. He came here to see a guest from the Empire itself. The guy in response, smiling and bowing, said that it was a great honor for him. Then the guy introduced himself that he was Tor Regis, an alchemist from Dulgaria. He is looking forward to working with the general. Grimacing, the general said that he was here more for the sake of his daughter, because she would be very upset if she did not get to know Thor. He was surprised by the general's words, and at that time a figure in armor appeared behind the man. Pushing her forward, the general told him to let them introduce his daughter Agnes. Agnes, who was in full knight's uniform, playing with her fingers with a tremor in her voice, said that it was nice to meet her. At this time, the general said that he was sure that the guy was a worthy warrior of the empire. Although he looked weak, he would be useful in battle, wouldn't he? 
The girl, embarrassed, stopped her father, and Mabel closed her eyes in irritation, but said nothing. The guy, without changing his face, only slightly saddened, said that he was not adapted to combat. The surprised general said that well, that's how it is. If only the guy were a warrior of the empire, he would give him a chance to fight his daughter, but the guy is so weak, he is disappointed. At this time, the girl stopped her father, saying that it was impolite, and at this time flames peeked out of the holes in the helmet. The guy looked at it in surprise and the gloomy general told Agnes to calm down, because his blood flows in her. With a hissing sound, the general withdrew his hand and the fire on Agnes's head disappeared. After that, the general turned and looked at the alchemist and asked what was really strong in the empire. He has been to the imperial capital often and he has a territory near the border, so he wants to know the name so that he can meet him. At this time, Mabel, who could not stand it anymore, called the general and indignantly told him that Thor was their guest and an alchemist under the command of the demon king. It was impolite to address him in this way. Looking at the man with determination in her eyes, the girl told him to stop sniffing out rumors about the empire. Smiling, the giant put his hand on his chin and said that Mabel was right, the guy was their guest of honor. He admires the demon king's desire to learn new things from humans. But despite his words, the giant raised his hand and filled him with energy and said that he believed that he should learn strength and combat power, because both he and Agnes can only show themselves in battle. The girl did not back down and said that his highness wished for world peace. Frowning, the giant said that was why he would not be able to fight at full strength. Looming over the guy like a huge wall, the giant asked Thor what he could do to him, releasing a combat aura. The general asked how Thor could resist them in the lands of the demon lord if he could not fight. To the side, the minotaurs who saw this scene panicked, and Mabel trembled all over thinking that she was scared and called Mr. Thor. Pushing Mabel aside, Thor stepped forward, telling her to move away. Looking at this giant, the guy was thinking about that, that he is strong and can kill him with one blow. The guy didn't know what this giant would do to him if he didn't answer him. They might make a joke of it, or maybe be sarcastic in response, but he had already made up his mind. At that moment, the guy remembered Rukia and Mabel and decided to think that when he left the Empire, he swore before the Demon Lord. He was sure that this way he would live his life with dignity. Putting his hand on his heart, the guy smiled and thought that he was an alchemist and would be until his last breath. With these thoughts, the guy said that with his skills, he could improve the armor of the general's daughter. Frowning, the giant asked, with dislike, what the guy might know about armor. The guy, looking at Agnes, asked how he would add the attribute of the earth to the account. In his mind, the guy was thinking that if the attribute of water is too strong, it will evaporate strongly and steam out. If he is too weak, he can be defeated by fire and disappear. Unlike water, the attribute of the earth is stone and iron, which are resistant to heat. Smiling, the guy said that in order to withstand the power of the flaming titan, the armor requires the earth attribute to ensure heat resistance and the second earth attribute to ensure durability. The giant tilted his head and Agnes panicked. Mabel was surprised to think that the double addition of the earth attribute would make this item very rare. Right. Despite the overwhelming gaze of the giant, the guy extended saying that the current armor seems to have weakened at the joints, as if it could not withstand the heat. His skills are finely honed, and therefore he can make a new enchanted with an accurate balance of the elements. What does the general think about it? While Mabel and the minotaurs looked at the guy with concern and Agnes was waiting for her father's decision. The giant clenched his teeth in contempt and told the guy to mind his own business. He wouldn't let some weakling touch his daughter's armor. After that, the giant turned around and told Agnes that they were leaving. The girl in armor said that her father could not treat her like that, and then turned and bowed, and then went after her father. Seeing this, both Mabel and the Minotaurs, and Thor himself, were surprised. The Minotaurs were the first to come to their senses and with a twinkle in their eyes, they approached the guy and said that they were surprised that the general did not take a step towards the guy. He froze there. Mabel, blushing too, said it was amazing. The embarrassed girl said with a tremor in her voice that Mr. Racing was one of the five strongest people in the castle, and the guy had so bravely and openly opposed him, despite the pressure. The guy smiled and remembered the armor and said that he did not think it was courage, rather that work attracted his attention. Mabel tilted her head and asked what the guy was talking about armor. And the guy nodded and smiled and thought that he wanted the general to know his strength as a magician, that's all. The guy smiled and asked Mabel if they could continue the tour, to which the girl also smiled and said that they would do so. Following Mabel, the guy thought that he was interested in learning more about general racing and his daughter Agnes, but he did not think that this was what they should talk about here. Looking at the joyful Mabel, he decided to ask her when they would finish the tour. Maybe she can tell him more. The guy had no way of knowing what would infuriate General Racing. Standing in the hallway opposite each other, Mabel and Thor finished with today's tour. Mabel, looking at the guy, said that the tour of the Demon King's castle was over, and the guy did a great job. The guy nodded and said that it helped him a lot, and for that he is very grateful to the girl. 
giggling. The girl said that she was glad to help him and added that Mr. Thor seems that now he will not rarely use the sauna. The guy nodded with a smile, saying that the girl was right. He likes to relax in warm water, so he will definitely use it more than once. The girl smiled and said that the guy can use the sauna freely, but he must be careful when the sign is busy at the entrance. After that, the guy decided to go to the sauna with his treasure in his hand. He found a place saying that he immediately went to take a bath. Looking at the top of the door, the guy did not see the sign, which means it is free. Entering it, the guy saw a mattress and a chair. Approaching the mattress, the guy said that there seemed to be no one in the recreation area. Now he will help you to wash yourself in peace. After putting the basket on the ground, the guy looked around and noticed Agnes' armor. At this time, steam was hissing in the bathtub and, surprised by this, the guy said that how loud the steam was hissing. Or it could be the process of heating water by salamanders, which he learned about on the tour. Thinking about it, the guy introduced lizards breathing fire and said that speaking of salamanders, they obey the ifrit. No wonder Agnes comes here. Looking towards the open door, the guy thought that since he would use the sauna, he should at least say hello to her. As he approached the door, he looked inside and saw a dense aura enveloped. One of the salamanders was chewing someone's hair and because of this, the girl exclaimed and got up from her seat stroking the lizards and told them not to mess around. Looking at their cute faces, the girl smiled and said that she would play with them after they boiled the water. The girl pointed her hand towards the fire and a stream of energy gushed into it, causing the flame to burst out with great pressure. Agnes exclaimed joyfully at this. Agnes was a tan girl no older than Thor himself. Smiling, she took the happy salamander's muzzle and apologized, saying that her control was not alright. The surprised guy, looking at this tan girl, wondered what Agnes was. He hadn't seen her without her armor until now. Now her body was enveloped in flames. And then the guy noticed that the girl was naked and then realized that this was indeed the case. There is no such clothing that would withstand the descendant of an ifrit and the flame of a salamander. When Agnes takes off her armor, she is of course naked, retreating. The guy thought that it was not too late for him to leave. But then one of the salamanders hissed towards the door and Agnes noticed it and turned around. Then she saw the guy walking through and wondered what he was doing here. At this time, an angry salamander in anger jerked against the door, which shook the guy off, but the door did not open. When the surprised guy looked back, he saw the face of a salamander that breathed flames in his direction. Opening the drawer, the guy thought that he was about to activate a pocket super small pantry and collect the raging flames into it. As he expected, the flame released by the salamander flew into his pantry and was swallowed. The guy with the slight perspiration smiled and said it worked. To himself, the guy thought about how good it was that he had thought to create one just in case. And even if the pantry is small, its capabilities are not worse and it is enough to absorb the flame. At this time, Agnes, agitated, covered with cold sweat running down her body, screamed about what the salamander was doing, breathing flames into his highness's guest. From fright, her legs slipped and she fell to the ground and in a panic said that she urgently needed to call a doctor. But what would she tell her father if he saw them? At that time, a voice came from the other side of the door and the guy said that everything was fine. The girl did not understand and asked what the guy meant. And he smiled and said that he had something in store for such cases, so he was unharmed. The girl realized this and asked about it. That's how it was, and the guy, embarrassed, closed his eyes and said that, to begin with, could they talk after Agnes got dressed? Hearing this, the girl burst into flames and awkwardly closed her breasts and nodded. After a while, they were both sitting in front of the table and Agnes, who was already in armor, said that this was their second meeting, and then she introduced herself as Agnes Frieza. A salamander was standing next to the girl. The guy smiled and said that he was Tor Regas. According to him, regarding a recent incident, the girl clamped down upon hearing this and the guy trembled, slammed his forehead into the table and shouted for the girl to forgive him. Startled by this, the girl broke out in a cold sweat. The guy said in a trembling voice that he had heard that salamanders were responsible for heating the baths and he was interested, so he looked in. He thought she had come to them, although he had seen her armor in the recreation area. He could not have imagined that the girl would have nothing under them. He asked for a petition for this. The girl panicked, raised her hands and said that this was not the case, and then explained that at such a time few people look in here, so she sometimes comes to help these guys. Mr. Torriguez is definitely not to blame. She just didn't expect anyone to come here, so she forgot, or rather just didn't hang up the sign the bathhouse is occupied and he had to see something so unsightly. Upon hearing this, the guy stood up and said that this was not the case at all. Clenching his fist, he blushed red and said that rather the girl was so beautiful that he even looked at her. He thought that if a portrait was painted with Agnes, it would be a divine picture. When he came to, the guy said that he didn't mean it, and then asked for forgiveness again. The girl, smoking from so much praise, could not say anything, and the guy, seeing how steam was coming out from under the armor, thought that she seemed to be reliving what had happened. 
Exchanging apologies is a dangerous thing. It's better for him to change the subject. With these thoughts, the guy said that those who have the blood of an ifrit are so cool. The girl tilted her head asking what the guy meant. And looking at the armor from under which the flames were bursting, he said that even such first-class armor could not withstand the girl's flames. Even if only at the joints, they begin to weaken. So the guy thinks it's very cool that the girl has such a powerful flame force. Upon hearing this, the girl trembled and said that but she could not control the power of the flame. When she is nervous or agitated, fire spreads from her body. That's why she exercises flame control when she comes to help the salamanders. The girl with a trembling voice stroked the salamander and said that she was friendly with him because they had been friends since childhood. The guy looked at the girl sadly and said that it was not easy for her. The girl nodded and released a flame over her palm and said that because of this, she did not really like her mana. Before she awakened her fire mana, Agnes could wear clothes she liked. But now, whatever she was wearing was burning to the ground. Sometimes there are so many flames that it even burns the my of others. Thor smiled and said that he understood and would think about how to solve this problem. A girl with cold sweat running down her face asked what the guy meant. And then realizing something, she asked if Mr. Thor would really do anything with her mana of fire. The guy nodded and said that he would make every effort to do so. The girl, not understanding what was the matter, looked at the guy and asked why Mr. Thor was trying so hard for her. To which the guy smiled and said that because he was an alchemist hired by his highness the demon lord. The girl asked in disbelief that she would be able to put on clothes again and the guy smiled and said that he promised it. And then the girl remembered her father and asked regretfully how her father would take it. It's better for the guy to forget about it. The guy replied that at their first meeting, General Raisinga asked him what he could do if he didn't even know how to fight. The guy smiled and explained to the girl that this meant that her father wanted to understand what benefit he would bring to the domain of the demon king, didn't he? The guy thinks that solving Agnes' problem will just be an action that will meet the general's requirements. The guy looked at the girl with confidence and she said, slightly doubtfully, that this was probably the case. Then the guy got up from his seat and asked Agnes if she would trust him to solve this problem with the flame. With these words, the guy put his hand on his heart and the girl inside the armor trembled and cried and said in a trembling voice that she wanted to put on clothes and make friends again. Getting up from her seat, the girl in armor bowed and said that he would be so kind to help her. The guy, hearing this, lit up with determination and with a smile decided to immediately start developing a magic item, and before it was ready, she should use it. Having said that, the guy handed her a drawer and said that it was a mini version of the storage bag that the heroes once used. When the girl is overwhelmed with energy, she can crumple the flame in this box. After that, the guy said that he needed to run because now he didn't have to wash. The excited girl said that but this is a very important thing. The guy smiled and told her to take it. He can create another one. It is better than that the girl shared her impressions after use. She will need to hold it in her hands and when she needs to mentally pronounce the words assembly. While the girl was standing, the guy left and she thanked him. The guy walking through the castle of the demon king thought that those who have the blood of an ifrit flowing in them gradually masterfully master the control of the flame with age. That is, before Agnes, there were those who faced the same problem. In general, it seems that they completely master the flame by the year 20, top players and for Agnes it will be at best in 5 years. 5 more years. Until then, she will not be able to wear everything she wants, and will be forced to be friends only with salamanders. From the realization of this, the girl clenched her teeth in sadness. The guy thought about how he should be accepted by Mary to fix this problem. And this should not be some kind of temporary measure. A more radical solution is needed. Opening the door in the workshop, the guy found his gurney book and said that this book was a storehouse of objects and shouted the world of heroes. He wouldn't be surprised if there was even a flame-quelling object there. At that time, Mabel also came into the room and asked the guy if he was looking for something. She looked at the guy with concern and said that the door was wide open and she thought that it looked like Thor was in a hurry, did something happen? The guy smiled and said that he had just had the opportunity to chat with Agnes and he was going to create an object for her to contain the flame. The surprised girl said that's how it was, and then called Mr. Thor. The girl put her hand to her chest and said that he had to do it for her sake, she had asked him to do it too. When the guy heard this, he remembered the first time they talked about the general. Then the girl still bowed her head sadly and the guy did not understand what was the matter. The guy asked with interest about that, that maybe Mabel is friends with Agnes. The girl nodded sadly and said that she had served in the castle of the Demon King since childhood and therefore often saw her. Smiling, the girl said that they had played a long time ago, but did Mr. Thor know that there was a skilled healer in the castle? Even the burn mark was completely removed. With these words, the girl showed her hand. The guy understood something from the girl's words and asked if it turns out that Agnes once burned the girl. 
She remembered that time for a second and said with a sad smile that after that they drifted apart. At the same time, she became friends with her majesty. Since then, Agnes began to avoid people and stopped showing her face. She seems to be plagued by guilt and fear of hurting anyone else. The guy remembered the lonely figure of Agnes and thought about how things were. He should start alchemy right away. With determination, the guy thought that he would create a magic item capable of suppressing Agnes's fire mana. Perhaps, if successful, Mabel and Agnes will be able to be friends as before. Looking through the gurney, the guy found something and stopped at it. It was a health promotion pendant. The description said that it helps to improve the circulation of vital energy in the body and strengthens health. If the client has been feeling unwell lately, it means that it is due to an energy imbalance. In this case, you definitely need to use this pendant. This is the choice of the greatest doctor, because energy is the basis of life. The girl looked at it with interest and the guy explained saying that it was a health promotion pendant, which had the so-called Feng Shui embedded in it. The girl tilted her head, wondering what kind of Feng Shui it was. The guy, seeing this question on Mabel's face, explained, saying that it seems that in the world of heroes, the general idea of mana is different from their idea. Smiling, the guy said that in their world mana is divided into light, darkness, earth, water, wind and fire. But in their world, apparently, mana is divided into five types. Wood, fire, earth, metal and water. The surprised girl clenched her fist and excitedly said that it really wasn't like them. The guy nodded and said that another difference is that, in the world of heroes, mana attributes can be transformed into each other. Probably. This pendant moves five types of mana in a circle, due to which it tones the body and awakens its potential ability. But unfortunately, the mana attribute conversion system is written here only in general terms. The tree catches fire and tortures the fire, and the ashes left after the fire become earth, which in the course of its transformation generates metal, well, or something like that. This is just general information, but it's expected. The guy, looking at the book, thought that the magic community from another world couldn't just take and openly post important data. The guy thought that even in the world of heroes, mana conversion was a secret technique. In addition, the lack of knowledge will not be a big problem for them. The explanation says that on the health promotion pendant, there is an azure dragon, a red bird, a white tiger and a black turtle, and in the center there is also a unicorn. Apparently, the pattern of divine animals engraved on the pendant makes the process of mana transformation pleasant for the owner. Listening to all this, Mabel excitedly said that is expected from an object from the world of heroes. Even the little things are thought out. The guy nodded and said that it was written that thanks to this, the mana inside the body comes to balance, thereby strengthening health. Dormant abilities are probably awakened at the same time, which can be a great success. Surprised, the girl said that it was an amazing object. The guy smiled and said that he also thinks so. Of course, this item should help to contain Agnes's fire mana. And now Thor was going to start creating this item. Having wrapped himself in mana, the guy used the skill of higher alchemy and called the window for making an item. A new notification with a picture of a pendant popped up in front of the guy. The guy was looking out the window analyzing thinking that it should be on a smooth chain so as not to damage the skin. And the pendant should also be approximately the size of a palm. And the most difficult thing is to carve the figures of sacred animals in it. Say Ryu must be an azure dragon, by Akko. Everything is clear here too, there are tigers in this world. Suzaku is probably the image of a scarlet bird. Jenbu and Kirin, of all of them, need to be depicted exactly as they look in the book and then it should work. With an understanding of the appearance, the guy finished, and now about the materials. Smelting a health promotion pendant using a piece of metal as a material with the addition of an internal monotype conversion mechanism. From wood to fire, from fire to earth, from earth to metal, from metal to water and from water back to fire. Whether it turns out, with the element of fire, water, earth, probably there will be no problems. But however the elements of wood and metal and whatnot in this world. At this time, a new notification popped up in the guy's head, saying that he had mastered the basic control of the five basic elements. After that, there was a description. The description said that by acquiring knowledge about the mana of another world, it became possible to handle the elements of earth, metal and wood in addition to fire and water. After that, the question was whether to add these elements. The surprised guy exclaimed admiringly that so this is what the highest skill of alchemy is. It seems that higher alchemy can also work with elements of wood, earth and metal from the other world. If that's the case, then he should stop thinking and just do it. After his decision, the guy shouted to add elements of wood, fire, earth, metal and water to create a health promotion pendant. With these words, the guy closed his eyes and was covered in cold sweat running down his face from maximum concentration. He had to present the image of the object as accurately as possible. His mana enveloped the metal and began to transform it into a flat medallion with a chain. 
During the performance, the guy shouted at Mabel to make sure that the sacred beasts on the pendant were exactly the same as in the book. The girl nodded and quickly went to the book and began to pronounce their names. The dragon was the same. The tiger was the same. The turtle was the same. The bird was the same. That's right. Besides, the shaggy beast was fine too. So she informed the guy that all the images are exactly the same as in the book. The guy nodded, flashed mana and thought about how he should ensure accurate mana conversion. With these thoughts, he said that it was time for the realization of higher alchemy. At the same time, Agnes's overly strong fire mana will be replaced by other types of mana. After that, the guy nodded that the creation of the health improvement pendant had begun. With that, she should never post her again. A health improvement pendant was created and a new notification popped up in front of the guy, talking about the description of the item. The health improvement pendant was in the style of another world. It included elements of wood, fire, earth, metal and water. The rarity of the pendant was estimated at six full stars. The description said that the pendant was created based on the concept of converting mana from the world of heroes. Then there was an explanation of the principle of action, which was simple. The owner's mana is divided into five elements and converted into five types of mana. If the mana of fire has a power of 100, then it is converted into mana of wood, fire, earth, metal and water, each of which is equal to 20. All converted mana will be used to improve and maintain the health of the owner. Then there was an explanation of what the mana of each element does. The mana of wood gave the owner flexible vitality. The mana of fire gave the owner active energy. The mana of metal gave the owner strength and the mana of water gives the owner flexibility. Then there was an explanation to the description. The stronger the owner's mana, the more strengthening and healing effects. This was followed by a strength that was unknown. The explanation for this was that when attacking, mana is transformed or absorbed and the probability of destroying the item is unknown. The service life was more than 100 years. The pendant fell to the floor and the guy sat down and took it, saying that he had succeeded. He hoped that it would help to contain the mana of the fire. Looking at the guy, Mabel called him, saying that the pendant depicts five divine beings and if you concentrate mana on it, it will circulate in a circle, which will contribute to the health of the body, so. The guy smiled and said that it was so. Then the girl excitedly asked what if statues of these five deities would be erected and placed around the territory of the demon king. From these words, the guy thought about it and thought that the mana that circulates in this pendant makes people healthier. If you apply this to the whole kingdom, it will not be that incredible. Raising his thumb, the guy said that it was possible to try it. The girl smiled and said that she would first ask his highness the demon king for permission. The guy thought that it certainly sounds difficult. Smiling, the guy looked at the pendant and thought about it. Whatever the case, the pendant was made. Now we need to check it and make sure that it successfully converts mana. Anyone can use such a pendant. It can even be made a standard piece of equipment in the lands of the Demon King. The guy was looking forward to tomorrow. At this time, Agnes was staggering insensibly through the corridors of the castle in her armor. Suddenly, he noticed a familiar person and that person was her father. The general saw Agnes and said that he was looking for her and where she was. The man put his hand on his chest and said that after tomorrow they would return to their territory and he told her to get ready. The girl asked for forgiveness and said that she had not been to the castle for a long time, so she looked around. Upon hearing this, the man said that since everything was like that, there was nothing wrong. Then the girl apologized once again for making her worry. The man stroked his beard and said that there was nothing wrong with it and he did not blame her. She should be the one to forgive him for all the trouble she has to go through. She can't control her flames because she has very strong blood of their Ifrit ancestors flowing in her vein. It's like one of the instincts to express strong emotions with fire. And controlling it is not something he can teach her. The girl smiled sadly and said that she understood her father. The man turned around and said that the report for his highness the demon king was ready. Now they should return to their territory and start mining the mine. They also received permission for joint operations with the empire. Agnes looked at her father and said that because the territory they controlled was not far from the border and therefore they should be on good terms with the empire. The general smiled and said that this was exactly the case. He came to look at the face of their guest from the empire. And God, this man turned out to be a white, handled noble. Hearing this, Agnes called her father and he smiled and said that she should ask him and he himself would tell her that he did not have combat skills, did he not? He doesn't really know how a nobleman turned out to be such a squishy. He imagined an aristocrat from the empire strong enough to compete with him. He is truly pathetic. It has disappointed him very much. Listening to all this, the girl couldn't help but let out flames from under her armor and screamed for her father to stop. The man looked back at his daughter and she said with anger in her eyes that Mr. Rickas was a very good man. The surprised old man asked what the girl was talking about with this guy and she nodded and picked up the box, saying that she had seen with him and he was worried about the fact that she could not control her flame and gave her a valuable item. Therefore, the general must stop speaking ill of him. 
General gloomily said that he understood, and then remembered that the guy said that with his skills, he could improve the armor of the general's daughter. Turning around, the general said that they didn't need anything from him. The girl, burning with rage, called her father and when he looked back, he saw how the flame of her daughter's anger was being absorbed by the box. Seeing this, the man twisted his face and said that even with such a thing, she could still only wear this armor. The girl wanted to say something, but her father interrupted her, saying that he should understand. With that, he put his hand on her shoulder and said that he was thinking about her more than anything else. Even this mind development is being carried out for her benefit. The girl eagerly resigned herself and said that she knew. For this exchange, he exchanged letters with the border counts from the Empire. The general nodded and said that was true. It will be useful to Agnes if the negotiations with the Empire are successful. They will need to destroy the magical beast lurking in the mine. And that's where she will come to the rescue. She will prove everything that her firepower can be useful. The girl did not dare to say anything. But the man continued, saying that her flame could easily defeat magical beasts, and this would amaze people from the Empire. They will all say, here she is Agnes, the daughter of General Rising. The girl bowed her head with a tremor in her voice and said that she understood. Then, touching her chest, she thought that however, the truth is that you can live a much kinder life. It is possible, but she does not know how to achieve it. When the mana of fire first awoke, the flames got out of control and burned her dear friend. Approaching it, a person risks getting burned. Naturally, she distanced herself from the people around her. But despite this, there are kind people talking to her, but he... He was not even afraid of Agnes's fire. Moreover, he said that he would help solve this problem. Indeed, Thor is an amazing person. She understands why Mabel is resolutely on the side of this man. Obviously, kind people get along well with each other, but she can't be with these people. As long as there's a flame inside her. With sadness in her voice, the girl said that she realizes that she is the daughter of a Hebrew family and would never do anything to blacken her father's name. Upon hearing this, the general smiled broadly and said that this was how it should be. The departure will take place the day after tomorrow, and until then she can be free. The girl nodded at these words of her father and with the moon in the high sky inside one of the rooms of the castle. The girl took off her armor saying that the day after tomorrow she would not be in the castle of the demon king. Walking to the side, the girl burning with flames said, she remembered that that young man said that he would find a way to suppress the flames, but there was too little time. Just this one amazing object. Not even just the words that this young man said is enough for her already. She took out a drawer and the drawer began to absorb fire from her body. And the girl thought about it, that she doesn't need more at this time. Looking at the moon outside the window, she should thank Thor Rigas when she sees him tomorrow. She thanked him for thinking of her. In the throne room of the Demon King's palace, the Demon Lord was sitting in his seat, and his faithful servant, Chancellor Kelv, was standing in front of him. Looking at the Chancellor, the Demon King said that it looked like the search for a suitable place for Thor was not going too well. Sitting on one knee in front of his highness, the butler said, it's not easy to find something like this. They're talking about opening an alchemy workshop. In the case of Thor, a place is required where alchemical items can be easily found. Living within the castle, it is problematic to go outside to collect random materials and stones. But there is another problem that there are a lot of people in the palace and in the cities. He is not sure that all of them will immediately accept Thor if he opens a workshop. After thinking about it, the demon king said that it looked like the chancellor was right. It's still dangerous to suddenly introduce Thor to the general public. Thor has no prejudice against demons or inhumans, but the demon people are not used to people. Raising his head, the Chancellor said that he thought that a place with natural nature, where there are not many people, would be more suitable than a city if only there was someone next to it who could act as its defender. The Demon King nodded and said that he knew it was difficult, but he hoped that the Chancellor would continue the search. Cav nodded, of course, saying that he would do his best. After that, the Demon King moved on to the topic of racing. Although Rukia had told him that Thor was a guest and should not be treated rudely, General Risinga's behavior could not be called courteous, but she had already done everything she could. Racing did not harm Thor, which means that if he is punished only for rude words, there will be those who will be wary of Thor after this. In this case, Thor will not be able to do what he wants. What he wants is to consult with the Demon Lord and create magical items. Therefore, they cannot allow this to happen. Putting his hand to the mask, the Demon King thought about how it really only remains to find a place for Thor outside the castle. No, she shouldn't let that happen. After his decision, the Demon King told the Chancellor to take over the workshop. The next day, Agnes came clamped on the roof of one of the castle buildings, and Thor was standing in front of him. Agnes bowed and greeted Thor, and the guy also half raised his hand to his heart and thanked her for coming here. There was a head behind the guy and the knight immediately realized who it was and called Mabel. Smiling, Mabel appeared from behind Thor and apologized, saying that she had asked Mr. Thor to take her with him. As a maid, she wants to help him today. Agnes nodded when she heard this, and then panicked a little. 
When the guy saw this, he sadly thought that although he had assumed, it seemed that Agnes was really still upset about Mabel's burn. Then Agnes turned to Mr. Thor and said that she had come to say goodbye to him. The surprised guy asked what Agnes meant and she said that tomorrow she should return to the estate with her father. Even though Thor said he would make a flame-suppressing item for her, she doesn't think he'll have time to finish it before they leave. For this, she begs for forgiveness, because she is sorry that everything turned out like this. To the surprise of the girl, the guy said that there was no need to apologize because the subject was already ready. Agnes raised her head without understanding, and the guy smiled and said that the flame suppression item of Miss Agnes was already ready and took out the pendant that he had made. The guy showing it said that it converts the mana of fire into mana of other attributes. So when a girl wears it, it weakens her mana of fire. She will become flexible like wood, strong like earth, and strong like metal, and her skin will probably become shiny like water. The surprised girl asked in a panic that everything was ready so quickly, to which the guy held out a pendant and asked Miss Agnes to experiment with a health promotion pendant. Mabel is here to help her with that. At this time, the maid took out clothes and smiled and said that they had prepared clothes for Agnes. Approaching her, Mabel smiled and asked her to take off her armor, please. Panicked, Agnes said that this was impossible. And when she remembered the trauma of childhood, she screamed that she would burn her dress, she would hurt her again. Smiling, Mabel said that was why Mr. Thor had made her this item. There is no mistaking what Mr. Thor is doing. Despite these soothing words, Agnes clamped down and said that she was afraid. Thor replied with a smile, so that she wouldn't worry, if something happened, he would immediately adjust the pendant. Smiling, the guy said that he would recreate the item as many times as needed. This is his sincere desire. The girl, hearing the guy's words, remembered what he had given, then she remembered a conversation with her father, and then a conversation with Thoreau himself. Smiling, she thought that Thor had always calmed her down before when she was nervous and unsure. Clenching her fists, she said that if she left without trying, she would definitely regret it. Therefore, she was much more afraid of it. So, holding out her hand, the girl told Mr. Tor that she would like to use the pendant that he made for her. The guy holding out the pendant said that he would give it to her with pleasure. And so the guy was sitting in the room waiting. There was one salamander lying next to him, in front of his table, and two other salamanders were playing to the side. A salamander roared. And then the door creaked and the guy turned to see the dress and the girl trembling in it. The girl with a trembling voice thanked Mr. Thor for his patience. The girl was covered in sweat from excitement, and her whole body was trembling. Holding the hem of her dress, she said that she was so worried, because it had been a long time since she had worn anything other than armor. Bowing her head in embarrassment, the girl asked if she didn't look strange. With a twinkle in his eyes, the guy smiled and said that Agnes looked very cute. From such words, the girl blushed deeply and trembled and screamed that it was not true. Immediately, a mechanical voice was heard informing that the mana of fire imposes an energy effect of plus 100%. This was followed by a new notification saying that the mana of fire is divided into five attributes and converted into five types of mana. At the same time, the health improvement pendant lit up and seeing this, the guy realized that right now the pendant is converting the mana of Mrs. Agnes's fire into mana of wood, metal, water and other things. The excited girl suddenly felt a surge of strength, and the guy, seeing this, thought about it. That the transformed mana of each attribute has its own special effect on the wearer, and the pendant itself strengthens the health, body and mind of the wearer. A new notification surfaced saying that fire mana is converted to earth mana, and the effect of the earth attribute stability plus 100% is also added. The mana of the earth, in turn, is converted into mana of metal and a metal effect is applied and strength plus 100% is added. Metal mana is converted into water mana, and the effect of water increases flexibility by plus 100%. The mana of the water is converted into mana wood and the tree's vitality effect is increased by 100%. Feeling all these effects, the girl said that it is healthy, her skin literally shines. Right away, the girl said happily, that her whole body is so light. At this moment, one of the salamanders sweetly called the girl and the girl slightly lifted the hem of her dress and bent the salamander towards her, but it seems that she did not calculate the strength and bent too high. Seeing this, the guy said that now all of Agnes' fire mana is going to strengthen her body. Mabel opened her mouth in shock when she saw her friend fly. Agnes fell to the ground, and the guy continued to explain, saying that it would take some time to get used to it, but at least the flame should not burn Agnes's clothes or anything else. The girl blushed in panic and screamed that it was dangerous, because she was not wearing underwear now. She immediately grabbed the hem of her dress and covered it as soon as she landed. The girl, all red, opened one eye and saw a blushing guy who turned around and asked for an apology, saying that he saw everything. The girl screamed at this, and then said that it was okay, everything was fine. But her pendant shone brightly and a new notification popped up in front of her that the mana of fire imposes an energy effect of plus 150%.
the speaker's fire mana is converted into earth mana, and the effect of the earth attribute stability plus 150% is also added. The mana of the earth, in turn, is converted into mana of metal and a metal effect is applied and strength plus 150% is added. Metal mana is converted into water mana, and the effect of water increases flexibility by plus 150%. The mana of the water is converted into mana wood and the tree's vitality effect is increased by 150%. Coughing dryly, the girl, emitting steam from her reddening face, said that it was a little embarrassing that the pendant started working so suddenly. The guy, sweating from embarrassment, said that this was a side effect. Then the guy forced a smile and thought that in any case the experiment was a success. The health promotion pendant works. Seeing this, Mabel smiled and thanked Mr. Tora. The surprised guy tilted his head and the girl clapped her hands and happily said that now she could fulfill an old wish. The girl immediately approached Agnes and hugged her, asking for forgiveness. Surprised, Agnes, not understanding what was happening, worried that when her emotions were restless, there would be a fire. Hugging Agnes and hugging her to herself, the girl with a soft smile told her not to worry about it. She continued sadly, saying that Agnes was always afraid, wasn't she? She lived with the idea that she risked burning others. Shocked, Agnes froze, and Mabel continued, saying that she was probably the one who inspired Agnes with this fear, she was really sorry. Agnes said in a trembling voice that this was not the case, and then, unable to restrain herself, she poured streams of tears, saying that she had burned Mabel then. When they were kids, because Mila had awakened in her and she couldn't take Mana under control, and it's entirely her fault, and she should apologize for it. Looking at her friend with a sad smile, Mabel said that Agnes apologized a lot even then, whether she remembered it. But if she hadn't cried and run away then, Agnes would have accepted her abilities more calmly. Trembling, Agnes said that it was not so, it was her fault. Mabel smiled gently and reassuringly said that now everything is over, her fever will not touch anyone else, now she can become like everyone else, isn't that so? Agnes sensually called Mabel and she hugged her friend even tighter, saying that everything was fine, now everything would be fine. Restraining herself, Agnes thanked Mabel, but still she could not restrain herself and began to cry in three streams. At this time, the pendant immediately started to work, notifying her that her mana was being converted into other elements by Baffet. The surprised girl stopped in a stupor, and then she and Mabel both raised their heads at the voice and laughed embarrassedly. Seeing this idol, the guy couldn't help but be touched by it. Then, holding out her hand, Mabel said that now it was Mr. Thor's turn. The guy, not understanding what she said, asked what Mabel meant and she winked at her and told him to hug Agnes now. The girl, blushing all over in a panic, asked why, why would Mr. Thor do this? The girl smiled and told her friend that Nada would use any opportunity to communicate with people, and Agnes, panicking blushed even more and looked away and said that but suddenly Mr. Thor does not like this. Then it will be unpleasant for him. Then Mabel smiled sweetly and asked Thor if he liked the idea of hugging Agnes. The guy with the twinkle in his eyes said he didn't think it was a bad idea, and he said to himself that he considered this question rather unfair. And so Agnes stood up and opened her arms all red. She looked at the guy with cold sweat running down her body and especially down her face. Thor himself was not in the best condition. He was nervous as hell too. Looking at the girl's pile, the guy thought that if you think about it, she's not wearing underwear right now, it seems too hard to hug her now. At this time, the loud voice of Agnes' father could be heard in the corridors of the castle. Walking down the corridor, the man looked around and wondered where Agnes had gone. Then he noticed something, and said that there were baths here, so it must be here somewhere. Soon he came in and happily said that he had found his daughter. But as soon as he noticed Thor and Agnes standing opposite each other, his eyes bulged out of their sockets and turned red. The man frowned and asked the guy what he was doing. Thor smiled awkwardly and said that it was difficult to explain. Enraged, the general hovered over the guy, emitting a monstrous amount of pressure and angrily asked what the guy was doing to her daughter. The guy was blocked by Mabel, shouting for Mr. Racing to stop. Shouting in anger, the general told Mabel to get out of the way, but the girl, without moving, firmly said that she would stay where she was because Mr. Thor was her benefactor and he also helped Miss Agnes. Panicked Agnes also looked at her father, but the general was furious and did not understand what he was doing. He shouted at her to move away, holding out his hand. He said that he would take the guy to his estate, where he would answer for all the crime that he had committed against his Agnes. The guy, covered in cold sweat running down his face, told the general to listen to him first, but the veins bulged on the general's face and he shouted for the guy to shut up. In an instant, the general rushed to the side, moving away from Mabel and with a jerk like a flash of light rushed at the guy. Seeing this came up with the idea that it was too fast. Mabel would definitely not be able to react. At this time, the guy began to remember what they had discussed. A few days ago, the guy asked Mabel what she would say about General Rizang, what kind of person he was. Then Mabel smiled and said that he was very protective of his daughter. 
The guy nodded awkwardly, smiling, and Mabel continued, saying that of course the general is also a strong warrior. There is a legend that once on the battlefield, he pierced as many as a hundred people with his fiery spear. Looking at the angry face of this monster, the guy thought that such a legendary warrior, from whose stroke a hundred fighters die at a time, and all his power is directed at him. At this time, Agnes appeared in front of the guy and she held her father's hand with one hand and with a frown told Tom to listen to her. The stunned guy wondered about the fact that she stopped him with one hand. Enraged, the general, falling into a frenzy, shouted at Agnes, but she did not even flinch. Feeling the rage, she felt a surge of energy with him, and a new notification appeared in the sky, saying that the mana of fire imposes an energy effect of plus 250%. The speaker's fire mana is converted into earth mana, and the effect of the earth attribute stability plus 250% is also added. The mana of the earth, in turn, is converted into mana of metal and a metal effect is applied and strength plus 250% is added. Metal mana is converted into water mana, and the effect of water increases flexibility by plus 250%. The mana of the water is converted into mana wood and the tree's vitality effect is increased by 250%. Thanks to these effects, the girl didn't even feel the pressure. Releasing the energy, she took her father's hand and he calmed down slightly and noticed that the girl had curbed her mana. The pendant around the girl's neck glowed brightly and rose up and her father asked her what had happened to her. Her hair fluttered in the wind like a flame, developing in all directions. And Agnes, hiding Thor behind her, said that Mr. Thor had done everything possible for her. The recoiling general asked what the girl meant, to which Agnes said that thanks to Thor, she could now wear ordinary clothes. During this conversation, Agnes's pendant blazed with energy, constantly increasing her strength. After hearing Agnes's last words, the surprised man only now noticed that Agnes was not wearing her armor but ordinary clothes, and he asked in shock that she was now wearing clothes. At this time, Thor put his hand on the pile for Agnes and said that he was an alchemist, so when he heard what happened to Agnes, he thought he should come up with a solution to the problem. The guy sighed, thinking that it was good that he managed to explain himself right away. Hearing Thor's words, the general became even more enraged and said that he could see. The guy tricked Agnes into wearing these clothes. From such an assumption, the guy recoiled incomprehensibly, and the general's face was covered with swollen veins. and he clenched his jaw and said that the guy told the poor girl that the fabric that withstands flames, and under this pretext decided to strip her naked. Thor is a pervert and the general's patience has now come to an end. The guy quickly became covered in cold sweat running down his face and looked at the enraged general uncomprehendingly. He shouted, blazing, so that the guy would see his flame. The flame of the general of fire. He won't leave a chance for the guy to escape. At this time, the guy took out his box and activated the fire vault. All the fire that covered the giant began to soak into it and the surprised man shuddered when he saw it. Looking at Thor in shock, he asked who he was with cold sweat running down his face. The guy smiled with flashes of fire around and said that he was an alchemist, subordinate to his highness the demon lord. The guy peacefully spread his hands and said that his goal was to solve the problems of the inhabitants of the demon king's lands and make them a better place to live. That's why he came up with the idea to solve the problem with Miss Agnes's magic and that's it. The man clenched his teeth holding back his anger and the guy anxiously said that he knew that the man would not believe him anyway. But at least he should listen to him. At this time, Mabel also called for the general. Trembling with rage and indignation, the general stirred up his rage with renewed vigor and shouted that he would get the guy anyway. He's got to talk, he's not going to back away from it. With such thoughts, the man made another dash towards Thor, but Agnes stopped him again. Enraged, the man released overwhelming pressure towards his daughter, but she did not flinch and screamed for her father to stop. The general shouted at his daughter to let him go, because he was doing it for her good. Unable to stand it, the man's hair caught fire, and he increased his pressure. The ground under Agnes's feet began to crack and she herself began to be suppressed. The wind rose in all directions, lifting Agnes' skirt. Mabel and Thor, who became a spectator of this confrontation, were surprised and sweated from the heat that the giant was emitting. The general was burning with such a thing that he could not escape from his daughter's grip. His muscles were swollen and the veins on his body were swollen, applying the maximum amount of pressure. The man still could not break away from his daughter's grip. As he increased the pressure, Agnes's hair also began to burn and she herself felt a surge of energy. Enraged by the fact that he could not tear himself away, the general asked what it was. How did Agnes get such power? It was hard for the girl, too, and she also felt furious. Rage caused her to release fiery energy. And the fiery energy was immediately transformed into other types of energy and thus the girl received a buff from the health pendant. She screamed that it was because she was very angry right now. And that's why she was using all her mana. Turning pale, the general, not understanding what was the matter, asked that if her daughter was angry, then where was the fire? She should flare up when a girl's emotions take over. 
The girl's pendant was still glowing brightly, filling her with energy and pointing at her. The girl said that thanks to Mr. Thor, she had curbed her flame. The guy, looking at this situation, analyzed without ceasing. He immediately realized that all the energy that Agnes was releasing was being converted into different types of energy by the health improvement pendant. He realized that the girl draws vital energy, energy, flexibility and strength beyond her own capabilities from the pendant. This is quite enough to block the general's movement. The girl with the flaming hair looked up and screamed that her fire had been hurting others all the time, but now she could use it to protect the people she loved. The general felt that his energy was not enough and her daughter was about to surpass him. With a new outburst of rage, the girl screamed that Thor Regas had helped her gain the power of the primordial flame. Thanks to him she realized everything. With these words, the girl lifted her father up, and a mechanical voice rang in her head saying that the girl's emotions were raging and the mana of fire gave her plus 400% vitality. The general, not believing his ears, said that this could not be, but the girl was able to lift him up and shouted for the man to apologize to Mr. Thor. Looking at this funny picture, the guy asked Mabel if she knew the legend of the hero who raised the dragon. The girl nodded with a smile and said that she knew one, in which the hero crawled under the belly of the dragon and lifted his huge body. The guy said he thought it was a little too much for a hero, but maybe it was true. Feeling awkward, the general said that he would do as Agnes said and he apologized to him. He even swore by the name of the fire general. And after a while, Agnes, Thor and Mabel looked at the man who was sitting on his lap and listening to his daughter's words. Agnes explained to him what had happened. That's why Mr. Thor made a flame suppressing item for her. That's how it was, and my father misunderstood everything. Upon hearing the explanation, the general turned pale and covered in cold sweat running down his face and bellowed like a wounded beast. Agnes smiled and pointed to the pendant and said that this is an object that suppresses the flame. It forms her mana of fire into other mana. It is a pendant for improving health. The white-faced man asked what her daughter meant, and she smiled and said that now the usual clothes that Mabel gave her did not burn on her. Sweating all over, the man asked Thor if it was true what her daughter was saying. The guy smiled and said that as the general himself sees, all this is true. Even Mabel nodded disapprovingly at the general. The girl spread her arms and said that thanks to this object, she could again wear beautiful dresses, which until now she could only dream of. And the father took and attacked Mr. Thor, so he responds to his help to her. Upon realizing the situation, the man trembled all over from awkwardness and stuttering did not know what to say, so he hit his head on the floor and screamed saying that he was sorry. With his muzzle in the floor, he said that how could he treat Agnes's benefactor so rudely? Even unknowingly, he is so ashamed of himself. Raising his head, the man looked at the guy with shock and said that he did not think that someone completely built would be so kind to her. Mr. Thor is truly a good man. Seeing the tears on the general's face, the surprised guy wondered what it was. Is this a man crying because of his daughter? Clenching his teeth and shedding tears, the general said that for the sake of his daughter's happiness, Mr. Thor was even ready to speak out against her father. So great is the desire of someone who helps others, he was stupid compared to Mr. Thor. Looking at him, the guy wondered if this was probably what people call fatherly love. Clenching a trembling fist, the man continued with a tremor in his voice, saying that everyone calls her the flame general, but he is not even able to discern the true nature of people. How could he be so blind? The surprised girl called her father, and Thor smiled and said that if the man had been, he would have been ready to listen to him from the very beginning. Roaring like a child, the general stood up, stuck out his thumbs and said that since he was so blind, he would just squeeze out his worthless eyes. Upon hearing this, Agnes, worried, screamed and Thor, holding out his hand, asked the man not to do this. Blinding yourself is completely unnecessary. Smiling, the guy said with feeling that he was going to continue to stay in the lands of the Demon King and it would hurt him every time he saw the general's wound. Removing his hands, the giant swallowed and said that he understood and would not do it anymore. The guy smiled and said that the man should not blame himself too much. He did not know that Agnes had curbed her powers. It is clear that the general immediately noticed her changed clothes and thought of too much, but he could not guess about the flame either. The guy looked at the general crying, and Agnes fidgeting restlessly next to him. The guy thought that the general really cared about Miss Agnes. Anyone will understand just by looking at them. He is definitely not one of those parents who see children as just a tool. He's a much better father than most. The guy couldn't help but remember his father at that moment. The guy smiled sadly and thought that he was even a little jealous. Then he said that they should just forget about all this and start their relationship from scratch. Slapping himself on the chest, the general said that so be it, he would follow Mr. Thor's advice. Then the fire general said that he also had to tell his highness about his mistake. Then the man bent down and said that he also wanted to report on what he and Agnes owed to Mr. Thor. It's the best he can do. The guy smiled and said that it was okay. Then the fire general said that he would like to reward the guy for saving her daughter and therefore asked the guy about what he wanted. The guy thought about it and decided to take advantage of this award. 
In the throne room, a fiery general bowed in front of the demon king, who was sitting on his throne. Next to the demon lord, of course, was Chancellor Kel. Looking at the general, the demon king said that it was unusual for the general to ask for an audience with him. Looking at the man on the ground, Rukia thought that Risinga appreciates physical strength. Perhaps that was why he had always underestimated her young age. If possible, she would like to strengthen his devotion to himself. Raising his head, the general said that he was Ryzen, the general of the flame, swearing before his lord and master, swearing allegiance to him forever and ever. He will give his life and soul if he breaks this oath in any way. This oath will be pronounced in the name of the primordial flame. Looking at the man, the demon king said that he did not understand what he wanted to say to him. Unlike the calm demon king, the chancellor was surprised and earnest, saying that the general had just said, in the name of the primordial flame. The chancellor asked Lord Rising if he understood what he was saying. Then the demon king, interested, asked what the chancellor meant. The chancellor raised his hand and said that in the name of the primordial flame, this is the unbreakable oath of those who have the blood of the fiery titans flowing in them. And only once did an effort descendant swear allegiance to the first demon king with this oath. The interested demon king asked Racing why he suddenly went to such a thing. The man gritted his teeth and regretfully said that he was stupid and disrespectful to the alchemist, who is directly subordinate to his highness, so he should apologize to his highness. The surprised demon king asked what he meant by Thor, his alchemist. What the hell happened between them? When the general heard the question, he said that Thor had simply cured her daughter of uncontrolled inflammation. This has already shocked the demon king along with the chancellor. The chancellor was the first to come to his senses and said that only her armor and Thor could contain the flame, shedding a stingy male tear. The man remembered yesterday's actions and began to explain, saying that at first he thought that Thor had deceived Agnes. In his stupidity, he even threatened Lord Thor with fire and tried to imprison him in his domain. At that moment, he was blinded by anger, but Agnes fortunately corrected his mistake. The surprised demon king asked what the general was trying to say. That Agnes had managed to stop him, nodding. The man bowed his head and said that thanks to the object made by Thor Rigas, the mana of fire in Agnes was transformed into strength and she became amazingly strong physically. Remembering that moment, the man shuddered. But nevertheless he said that with one hand she easily blocked his movements, and with both she even lifted him over her head. It was so amazing that it took a while for the Chancellor and the Demon King to realize. Then, finally coming to his senses, the Demon King thought that he knew, of course, that Thor would surprise her more than once. But he kept thinking how to achieve the loyalty of the general. And he took and strengthened his beloved daughter and forced his father to bow down. Smiling, the Demon King said that this was his alchemist. The general chuckled and said that, to tell the truth, he had doubts about the Demon King's policy of learning from people. But when he learned about Mr. Thor, he realized that his highness was wiser and more far-sighted than him. Therefore, as a sign of gratitude, he decided to swear allegiance to his highness. The demon king nodded and said that was the case. Nodding, the man said that as he had said, he was entrusting himself to his mercy. Having struck anyone about the grinding, the general asked to be punished for his oversight. The chancellor, who heard all this, began to dance along, singing that the fire of the descendant of the flaming titan, the mana of fire is transformed into his physical strength. Yes, such a force is enough to block the chancellor's movement. Things are impossible and all this is madness. Humming, the chancellor reached the column and presented it with his forehead. Seeing this, the demon king even got a little worried thinking that after the appearance of Thor, high-ranking officials in the castle of the demon lord took up smashing heads on the wall as a hobby. The demon king was thinking about Risinga's punishment, thinking that Risinga was trying to capture Thor. Yesterday she let him down because he was only threatening Thor, but now he tried to hurt him. Even if it was a misunderstanding, she shouldn't forgive him. As the demon lord, she would punish him. Then the demon king asked the general what punishment Thor wanted for him. With cold sweat running down his face, the general said that Thor wanted him not to be punished. Then the demon king said that it was in his spirit to do such a thing and that the general replied to it. The general, in response to the demon king's question, said that he begged Mr. Thor to punish him and then he said that he needed alchemical materials. He had heard that the general's lands were mountainous and that rare ores were mined in them. So let this be his reward and punishment for the general. He would also like to get the rights to visit the general's lands and look for materials. And while the general is here, he will be grateful if he introduces Thor to the inhabitants of his lands. After all, in the future he will organize an alchemy workshop for the residents. Upon hearing this, the demon king said that he understood, but thought to himself that it was very similar to Thor. Rukia thought so. She is sure that Thor was thinking about her and Agnes' situation when he said all this. If he had insisted on punishing General Racinga, indignation would have risen and Agnes would also have been out of favor with the people. Surely Thor understood this and did not want Racinga to be punished. Then the punishment that Rukia the Demon Lord would have imposed on Racing would have been fair but milder. 
Getting up from his seat, the Demon King shouted that the order of the Demon Lord Rukia ever guard to the Flame General Raisin. Despite the fact that this is a misunderstanding, it is inexcusable that he was going to take away the guest of the Demon King Thor Regis, so he will take away part of his lands from him. The general bowed and shouted that he understood. Then Rukia grinned and said that the lands to be seized were located near the mines. It should be a place where you can quickly extract and collect materials. Realizing what place his highness was talking about, the general raised his head, and the demon king said that he should build a large and comfortable house and workshop there. Crying, the man shouted that he would gladly accept this punishment. Rukia chuckled to herself, thinking that she was looking for a place for Thor to build a workshop for him outside the castle. It's very funny that this will be the most unlikely place in the territory of Raisinga. The Raisingi lands are a mountainous area with a lot of natural resources. There is not too much space there. Few people can interfere with the collection and extraction. You can, you can say that it is peaceful and safe there. And if Raisinge protects Thor, then there will be no need to worry about Thor at all. Looking at the Chancellor, who was still banging his face into the wall, the Demon King asked him what he could say in his defense. The Chancellor said that there is no such thing as mana transmutation. Although he said this, he did not stop banging his head on the column and of course it annoyed the Demon King. Unable to stand it, Rukia told him to stop it and speak clearly. The Chancellor asked for a petition and stood up and looked at the Demon King and said that he had hurt his highness. Then he went on to say that he thinks it's in their best interest. General Risinger is negotiating with the Empire, and the Chancellor was afraid that if they subjected him to severe punishment, they would take advantage of the discord among their lords. Rukia thought about negotiating with the Empire. A mine is being developed on the territory of the General. As a preliminary step, they are preparing to defeat the demonic monsters that nest in those mountains. To defeat them, they need to gather troops, but the place is not far from the border with the Empire. They didn't want the Empire to misunderstand that they wanted to invade the Empire's lands. That is why Risinga is negotiating with the Imperial Border County. If the negotiations are successful, the Empire and the demons will work together together to defeat all the monsters in righteous anger. Their combined forces will cope with this task. Except the Empire is the country that exiled Thor. Rukia was not sure that such people could be trusted. The next day, Mrs. Agnes and General Ryzen returned to their estate. In the end, the general announced that he would prepare a workshop and residence for Lord Thor in their lands. He said it would be done as an apology for what happened. When the guy asked if everything was okay, the general nodded his head. Agnes also said she was looking forward to it. It had been a long time since she had appeared in public in ordinary clothes and therefore looked very embarrassed. And so, after Thor saw them off, he returned to his room to continue his research into the field of alchemy. Before leaving, Agnes gave the guy a strange stone, which, according to her, did not melt even at high temperatures. She kept it as a talisman, but she doesn't need it anymore, so she can give it to Master Thor. After all, he wanted to get something that could be used as a material. She is happy to give the stone to him. Right now, the guy was looking at this stone and thinking that he wondered if this stone could be meteoritic iron. If so, it is a very rare ore. It was found next to the mine unchanged under the influence of high temperatures. It can be useful for anything. For example, weapons for killing monsters. In the mining area in the lands of the Demon King, a huge number of spider-like monsters were found in one of the caves. Spider cocoons were hung here and there, and the spider-like monsters themselves ate everything that caught their eye. There was a clatter of feet next to this cave and then a gang of thugs appeared, ranging from bald to one eye. It seems that their leader, the bald man, shouted that the lands of the demon king are full of treasures and they cannot be found by some subhumans, so his bastards must show that they know how to work. One-eyed approached the boss sweating, said that he had heard that creepy monsters lived here, and also a fiery general. Taking out a huge axe, the bald boss said that he did not know what kind of general one I'd was talking about, but if he appeared, he would just cut him in half. With these words, the bandit smiled crazily and swung his huge axe. His subordinates all supported him in chorus and while they were guffawing at the top of their voices, spider-like monsters appeared nearby and in a moment one of them bent down on this bald bandit. He did not understand what had touched him, turned around, as he realized that something was pulling him. A sticky web was entangled in him, pulling him somewhere, and the owner of this web was one of the many spiders. The bald bandit screamed at the top of his voice, but he could not scream for a long time, because as soon as the spider reached the human meat to his relatives, they immediately devoured him. After a couple of seconds, there was no body left from the corpse of the boss of the gang of bandits. Seeing this, the bandits froze as if rooted to the ground and began to turn pale and covered with cold sweat flowing down their body. The one-eyed bandit shouted that everything was gone. They should run while they could. And with these words, turning around, he ran wherever he looked, but soon one-eyed and his comrades came across a mountain. No, it wasn't a mountain, it was a huge, just a huge overgrown spider. With one swipe of his claw, 
He trampled all the bandits into a bloody mess. Some were followed by others and so on, until they all became food for spiders. At this time, Thor was looking at the black stone on his hand, which was burning with energy. The stone that Agnes gave him was unusual. It was the first time he had seen space attributes, but it was interesting. When he used the score, the name of the material was displayed. It was a meteorite and the description said that this stone fell from the dark cosmos. In its properties and composition, it differs from all materials on Earth, and also has the attributes of space, dark energy, and Earth. The hint said that the successful mining of meteorite iron had awakened a cosmic attribute that could be added to the items being created. After the guy came to the lands of the Demon Lord, new attributes become more and more accessible to him. In addition to the five attribute elements of the other world, wood, fire, earth, metal and water, now he also has space. He was very grateful for the materials provided and the place to stay. Seeing from his closet, the guy said that by the way, his highness said that he wanted to show him something. But looking out the window, the guy realized that there was still time before meeting him, and for now he had to clean up this closet. It's all over the place, although everything lay there like abandoned garbage. But to Thor it all looked like real treasures. All these boxes and things. While he was cleaning up, folding them, the guy came across a real treasure. He looked at the sword lying on the ground with a rather simple design. But with a stone in the core above the hilt, this demonic sword was similar to the one held by the statue of the first demon king. No, if you look closely, Thor wanted to evaluate it, but then he was called. The guy turned around and realized that it was his highness and said that he was here so the demon king could come in. A golden-haired beauty with horns as black as obsidian protruding from her head entered the room with a clatter of heels. She asked the guy what he thought. She would like to wear this new dress to the next tea party. The girl was dressed in a beautiful dark red dress and smelled of rose flowers. Blushing slightly, the guy said that she was coming to her majesty. Frowning, the demon king told the guy to call her Rukia. Putting her hands on her hips, the girl leaned forward and said that she would tell the guy a secret. She didn't really like being called his highness because it sounded distant. The surprised guy said that he did not mean that and therefore the girl proudly stuck out her breasts, slightly embarrassed, but smiled and said that then she commands that if the guy considers her a friend, then he should just call her by her first name, that is, Mrs. Rukia. The surprised guy asked what she was ordering. The girl winked, put her index finger to her lips and asked that in the empire, the demon lord is considered a tyrant because then she can be quite selfish. Sighing, the guy smiled and said that he understood Mrs. Rukia. The girl nodded and said that it was good that the guy was honest. Then the guy asked with interest that, but if she decided to go out for a tea party like that, it wouldn't be better to keep it a secret for the time being. The girl, caught off guard, pouted and blushing, turned away her beautiful twinkling blue eyes and said that she thought the guy would like it and therefore could not resist. Hearing this, the guy froze, and therefore his heart was pounding like crazy, because right now Rukia was so cute. The guy turned around rummaging through things and the girl asked him with interest what he was doing by the way and the guy said that he was vacating the warehouse, and he also found something. Taking out a weapon, the guy handed it to Rukia and asked if Ms. Rukia knew anything about it. After looking at the sword, the girl rubbing her chin said that this sword definitely looks like a demonic sword, but it is not as long as the one held by the statue. Then the girl asked what the guy himself thought about him. The guy opened his eyes wide and raised the sword above him, saying that perhaps this was a replica, since the material was just iron, and the only admixture served only as an addition to increase the overall strength. Someone probably tried to create a lost demonic sword, but the result was not as good as the original sword, so the idea was abandoned. Drawing the sword from the scabbard, the guy looked at the blade and said that it was broken, so they could not cut. It's definitely a defective item. Rukia, who had leaked the guy's assessment, smiled and said that the guy was speaking correctly. Then she remembered the past and said that during her grandfather's time, there was a plan to revive the demonic sword. The elves and dwarves worked together to create a replica of the artifact. But when they tried, they found that they could only achieve a small part of its power. The surprised guy trembled all over and asked in anticipation if he could take this sword. The surprised girl looked at Thor and asked why he was asking, isn't this his warehouse? Of course, he can do whatever he wants from here. But if he wants to be sure, then she is now officially handing him this sword. Bowing, the guy thanked Mrs. Rukia, raising his head. The guy with a purpose in his eyes asked if he could make a demonic sword worthy of Rukia out of this replica. The surprised girl recoiled and asked what the guy meant. The guy, slightly embarrassed, said that one of his dreams was to create a sword that would surpass the Holy Sword of the Empire. However, he doesn't have any fighting skills at all. Even if he creates a great sword, it won't help him in any way. Upon hearing this, Rukia said that she understood, and then the guy continued, saying that this is why he wants to create a great magic sword for Lady Rukia. The excited guy said that he had heard from the general that the girl would soon go to eradicate demonic creatures. If she can use the sword he gave her against them, 
Then it will be good. Upon hearing this, the girl smiled and said that she was grateful that the guy was thinking about it. So she was grateful to Thor, but to win this time, they would not need a demonic sword. The guy raised his head in surprise and the blonde beauty nodded and said that this time they didn't need anything that could safely attack monsters from a distance. And it is also desirable to have something that everyone can use, not a weapon, but an object that helps in battle. If they had something like that, she would be sure that they would not encounter problems. The guy said with a slight tremor that he understood, and then raising his trembling hand said that the object was to support the attack, something that would allow Lady Rukia to safely attack monsters from a greater distance. Clenching his fist, the guy with a glint in his eyes said that he understood everything and now he would try to come up with something similar. To this end, he took the sword and said that then he went, which shocked the demon king. But she quickly came to her senses and grinned and said that Thor was a busy man. Hexenbists are creatures that are incapable of intelligent dialogue and attack both humans and demons. These can be animals, giant insects or lizards. The guy started looking for something in the book that would help in the war against them. Searching hard, the guy thought that this time they would not need a demonic sword to win. We need something that can safely attack monsters from a distance. Making a magic sword for Mrs. Rukia would be great. But it's very interesting to see what happens and shout this order. Not only the guy, but also the excited Mabel, who was standing on the sidelines, was also wondering what kind of object they would create this time. She looked at the guy expectantly and he finally raised his hand in great triumph and said that he would try to create this thing. The girl looked at the book and did not understand anything and said that she could not read the words. But she saw here a strange black cylinder with a shiny surface, at the end of which there is a transparent stone. The guy smiled excitedly and said that it was a tool used by heroes to defeat monsters. The excited girl clapped her hands and said that it sounded wonderful. This would definitely be useful to them. The guy nodded and said that they should do it right now. After that, the guy asked Mabel if she would help him with the preparations. Of course, she was happy to help Mr. Thor. The guy, thinking about the design, thought that first of all he needed a magic stone with an element of light to emit light. As for the way to make light move in a straight line, it will probably be enough to surround it with darkness so that it can only move in one direction. In other words, he needs a dark energy stone to do this. It certainly sounded doable, he should try it. The guy turned on his higher alchemy skill and a window appeared in front of him. There he began scribbling and imagining everything he needed. He should try to add the wind attribute. The wind attribute also means to circulate and carry over long distances, so it will be responsible for the range of the light beam. Wrap the light in darkness and make it go straight. This is arranged quite simply, so it is easier to aim, and the beam reaches any place lying in a straight line from the shooter. The guy concentrated on creating an image and got a little lost. There is not the slightest loss of concentration, and the image in his head dissipates. He must concentrate in order to create the image he needs out of iron. Finally reaching the desired image, the guy thought that it looked like his creation would be much larger than the one in the product catalog, but the guy thought that this was acceptable. With these thoughts, the guy activated higher magic and mana transformed the materials. The pipe appeared in front of the guy, or rather a laser pointer. His description immediately appeared next to him. Three attributes were applied to create it. Light, darkness and wind and the instrument were rated at four full and one incomplete stars. The description of the item said that the mana of light splits and directs the beam, and the mana of wind directs the flow of magical power to the place where the blow is directed. The requirement stated that a magic stone of darkness and a magic stone of light were required. At the bottom, it was said that magic stones are consumables and need to be replaced regularly every three months. Resistance to physical destruction was added to the item, and the explanation stated that it could only be destroyed by magic weapons. The restrictions also said that it could not be used against humans, demons and intelligent inhumans. The service life of the item was 15 years, and the warranty was for one year. The guy showed the object and said that he had made it. An item from the world of heroes, the laser pointer is ready. The girl, looking at this thing, asked with interest what she could do and what properties she had. The guy pointed to the paper and said that she also looked at the catalog along with the translation memo. The magazine said that with this laser pointer, nothing more would be needed for presentations. With her, a person will no longer need any assistant. He will be able to speak and show at the same time. This is the number one thing on their bestseller list. It is especially useful for people in leadership positions. They will be able to accurately betray their goal and be suitable for competitions. What followed was that the gurney especially recommended the pointer to all teachers. Their instructions will definitely be passed on, and soon it will be quiet around. The laser beam is so powerful that it will easily reach the top of the mountain. But despite this, the buyer should never direct it at people because it scares away even annoying creatures. This is verified by competitors. Looking at this advertisement, the guy didn't understand much, especially what a presentation was. 
but he thought it was definitely a great subject. The description spoke for itself. The girl, looking doubtfully at this translation, asked what that line means, where they especially recommend it to everyone who works as a teacher and that their instructions will definitely be passed on, concocting a serious mind. The guy said that this means that the captain of the squad can tell his people exactly which enemy to attack. The girl read what was said, then their instructions will be passed on and soon it will be quiet, so this means that. The guy nodded, said that this means that soon the enemy will fall and fall silent, and the phrase never directs it to humans means that it is intended only for killing magical beasts. The fact that it is said here for competitions indicates that for the heroes of other worlds, defeating hexenbists is like a game. If you think about it, the guy heard that the heroes competed with each other here. For example, who can defeat the demonic beasts the most? The surprised girl said that if this was the case, then the laser pointer could mean the name of the competition to defeat demonic beasts. Upon hearing this suggestion, the guy realized in shock that he was still not perfect and smiled and said that as expected from Mabel, she had already got used to everything. She smiled sweetly and giggled and said that she was just Thor's assistant. Looking at the book, the guy said that this item is intended only for hunting demonic creatures, so there is no record of its use against humans, demons and intelligent inhumans. The guy thought that the heroes created him to effectively defeat demonic beasts. There are legends of heroes who attacked powerful demonic monsters from a great distance and defeated them in the blink of an eye. If the item can even reach the mountains, then no demonic beast will be able to get close to the shooter. In addition to all this, the guy cautiously pointed to a picture where a bird was depicted with the words of this annoying creature. Pointing at him, the guy said that it should be a monster bird. The elf supported Mr. Thor, saying that she was really terrifying. She had no doubt that it was true. The guy thought thoughtfully that a laser pointer is the object that will increase the range of damage to the magic of Lady Rukia. Such a powerful item could even change the form of warfare in their world. This is an item from the world of formidable heroes, a terrifying presentation. It's perfect for exterminating magical beasts, they should try it out once. After a while, on the street next to the Demon King's castle, the guy and Mabel went out there to test the weapon, but there they also heard an argument between two commanders. The commander of the Minotaur said that it was necessary to go into battle with the monsters immediately, to which the commander of the magical squad of elves said that if you do this, then the magical troops in the rear seem to be under attack. The commander of the magical squad of elves, looking at the commander of the minotaurs, said that if they moved too far forward, they would not be able to cover them, to which the minotaur said that they would fight Gargarasa until they were surrounded. Upon hearing this, the commander of the magical squad of elves, enraged, shouted that the minotaurs would agree with this, but the elves would have no cover left. If the elves are attacked from the flanks in their absence, they will not defend themselves. The commander of the Minotaurs, standing his ground, said that they would destroy the attackers so that this would not happen, to which the commander of the magical squad of elves said that it was not in their interests to get too close to the enemy. But the Minotaur added that they would not be able to attack unless they got close enough, they were only good at close combat. The monsters they have to defeat this time are Gargaras's whoppers and the smaller monsters following them in large numbers. It is believed that if their numbers are not controlled, the Gargaras will gather more and more impressive hordes of monsters around them. The Minotaurs and other vanguard troops want to break into the formation of monsters and destroy the main monster in one fell swoop, and the magic detachments from the rear guard strive to fight from afar so as not to be surrounded by enemies. But when the vanguard unit is advancing, then the magic unit must also advance, because if the front ranks start the battle too far away, then the enemies will be out of range of their spells. That's why their discussion has reached an impasse. At this time, Mabel informed the guy that they had come. Mabel pointed to the firing range and said that the distance from this line to the target is a comfortable distance at which magicians should stand to attack. And from here, where they stand, the target barely enters the spell damage zone. The guy asked that that stone target was the target, to which the elf nodded and explained that we should try to be closer to the central circle. The guy took his laser pointer out of his mini pantry and smiled and asked if the laser pointer would be effective. When the guy turned on the pointer, the girl immediately noticed that a red dot appeared on the target. The guy said that it should be the effect of a laser pointer, and then asked Mabel to try to direct the spell exactly into this light. The girl nodded and used a magic arrow. The magic arrow flew at the laser beam and was about to fall, but when it met the laser beam, it immediately headed for the target. The surprised guy said that it was wonderful, but the girl herself did not understand what happened. She thought she wouldn't get too far, though. The guy walking away said that it was a great shot. Next time they should increase the distance a little. After moving one and a half times from a comfortable distance, they both stood up and the guy pointed the beam directly at the center with a pointer and the girl fired and hit exactly the target. They retreated once more, this time twice from the norm. 
While they were doing this, the dispute between the commanders continued. The commander of the Minotaurs asked what the reason was. He explained everything. And the commander of the magical squad of elves said that why did this Minotaur not understand anything? Magicians need a safe distance. Clenching his fist, the Minotaur commander said that as long as they held them back, the elves would leave. Upon hearing this, the commander of the magical elf squad said that this was impossible, because magic has an attack range. And then the commander of the magical elf squad noticed something and squinted at the laser in surprise, seeing how far they stood from the target. The commander of the magical squad of elves said that they stood too far away. It was simply impossible to hit the target from such a distance. An arrow flashed and flew in an instant and hit right on target. Upon seeing this, the commander of the magical elf squad opened his mouth wide and was sweating from shock. At this time, the guy's back rested against the wall and the surprised guy realized that it looked like they had reached the training area, so they could not conduct the test from an even greater distance. The confirmed range is three and a half times higher than normal. Looking at the target, the guy said that from this distance any attack hits the target, because the experiment can be considered successful. Surprised, she asked how this was possible, because the target was outside the range of magic. The guy thought about it and said that all the attacks hit exactly the same place. And then the guy remembered the ray and it dawned on him. He looked at the laser pointer and asked if magic could be attracted by the flow of magical power created by the laser pointer. A mana stream pointing the way. The guy raised the laser pointer and said that it sends mana of light to the target, surrounded and supported on all sides by a stream of mana of darkness. This means that there is a ray of mana light between the laser pointer and the marked target. The girl looked at the beam, gasped in shock, and asked that in other words, if a magic projectile flies close enough to be able to touch the laser pointer, then this means that any magic attack hits directly into the target. The girl turned pale and said that it was an incredible ability. And the guy with a complicated expression said that it was a terrifying object from the world of heroes. Is it the power of heroes to decrease any monsters from any distance? The guy smiled happily and said that now they should show it to Mrs. Rukia. Then the guy remembered the commanders and decided to greet them first, and then put the training ground in order. The commanders looked at the guy with pallor, and when he asked if he needed to get out, they bowed their heads in fright. The guy, not understanding their fear, thought that if these guys are training, then it's better for him not to interfere with them. With that, he bowed and left. The commanders, looking at him in shock, asked each other that it looked like the problem they were discussing was no longer a problem. The elf, looking at the departing alchemist, thought that if they had this item, they would be able to achieve everything. A few minutes later, the commanders met with the chancellor and asked him for permission to use the item. The chancellor turned pale and shouted that he needed an explanation from Mr. Tor. And that's how the chancellor was intrigued by Thor's new creation.